Hey, welcome. Hi, once again, thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. Uh, it's been an awkward few days, but it's starting to clear up. How are you? I'm good too, and glad to have you here again. Glad to be back. Glad to be talking about choices. Yeah, exactly. And um, like I said before, we're going to talk about, you know, what happened in this week in choices. I mean, the books uh, they released, you know, like Slow Burn, um, Laws of Attraction, and then Baby Bump. And the, you know, we're also going to talk about It Lives Minutes because last time we talked about In the Woods. So, yeah, uh, glad to have you here to talk about those things. Yeah, as well. Uh... One thing I've been reading as well is the uh, very scandalous proposal. That's been. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, I totally forgot uh, that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good start. I need, to, I need to get started on Baby Bump. I'm going to be starting that very soon. And then uh, I'll be doing the long that with the slow burn and a very scandalous proposal. Can't wait. It's going to be good. Yeah, exactly. That, that's true. Um, I forgot about a very scandalous proposal actually they released. Yeah, uh, just one chapter. And I'm really excited about I think this book is a very interesting book. And also, this is going to define how next VIP books are going to be released because I think uh, they're trying a pattern uh, that they're going to release VIP books also like newly releasing books, like one chapter every week, not the whole book altogether. So that's a good thing, I, I guess. Yeah, it, uh, it makes sense, you know. Um, granted, people like to go through the books, but I think the fact that they slowly bring them out like this, you know, it gives, gives them something to work with. Yeah, the suspension. We get the time for the suspension to build. We crave for it. We wait for it. Because I personally feel when I have a whole 15 chapters book, I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to read it maybe next week. So, yeah, but when I'm, ha I have this book, it's kind of, you know, exclusive also. And, um, you know, it has more attraction toward it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one thing I like is, um, you know, with the standard, the standard version, you know, you don't have... Uh, infinite keys with the vip as you do i think it's really good bringing the books out like this because you can keep up with it properly um because you know your keys are recharging by the time the new episode's out so you can properly keep up with the story every time it releases exactly i agree with that yeah because otherwise you need to wait for uh, every three hours you need to check back yeah and the last thing you want to do is wait three hours for a cliffhanger yeah that, uh, that is really hard, you know, take it from me because uh, I joined Choices late. So I had to play like 10 or 15 books like that. And it was really hard. And in those times, in those times, three hours seemed really long, you know, like really long. Yeah, honestly, God, when, you, when you're waiting for something to go by, like I remember every Wednesday when I'm waiting for LOA, I'm just waiting. I'm like, is it time for it to come out yet? And it's like, no, I'm still waiting. It feels like I've been waiting forever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these are not going into high risk or anything. So, yeah, one week is a uh, fair time, I guess. Yeah, it gives, uh, it gives everybody enough time to, you know, work their way through the first few chapters or first chapter, get their head around it and, you know, prep themselves. And they can even give them some anticipation about what's coming next. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally agree with that. Let's hope for the best. So... Um, now let's start with Slow Burn because I'm, I was really excited to uh, read about the four, fifth chapter of Slow Burn. Uh, sorry, not Slow Burn. Laws of Attraction. Excuse me. Sorry. So Laws of Attraction, the fifth chapter that released this uh, Wednesday, my time. Um, it was really awesome because the mood court drama finally came to a conclusion and uh, it was fun. How did you like it? I I really loved it. It was a really interesting experience. Um, the overall thing, like, just it gave a good, like, a, it was enough pressure. It was a good test for um, for the main character and their associates to understand what, what this kind of pressure can do for, for them in the possible future. And then just the kind of ending to it, it, they kind of ended it with a bit of a twist, which was interesting. But I think if you actually dug in through the diamond scenes as well, you um, your character actually uncovered it, and it became and it, it it was actually a good test in hindsight because it showed how how strong your character is and how good they are at deeping into the uh, deeping into all the deep secrets to actually br bring out the truth and bring out any possible like problems. So I think it was a really good test. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I liked the overall chapter. The suspension built in chapter four, and then it came to con- uh, conclusion to in this chapter, and it was really interesting. You know, first we start, um, and like I said in the last chapter, we discovered the um, you know the main evidence that we needed to win this case with Ryan, but we never. I mean, the readers never know about it, and until maybe in the fifth chapter that we got to know. Um, and in the courtroom, we presented and we win the case. And that was yeah, really awesome. You know how we, we are getting stronger. And I don't know if I play the diamond scenes, so I really don't know if you don't play the diamond scenes. Also, then if you um, get to the top, or how if you don't play the, the diamond scene with Aslin to boost her confidence, uh, if you still get the top spot or not. But yeah, it was a really you know uh, eventful chapter, I would say, because a lot of things happened. So and even full chapters are really awesome. Yeah, no, it was, like you said, it's a really good chapter overall. I did play the Aslin Diamond scene, but I didn't play the second one, I don't believe, uh, at the fire station, which we can talk about in a sec. I, I, I decided not to go in on that one, to keep it kind of, uh, stay loyal to Aslin uh, for my own benefit and for my own good. Don't want Aslin being mad at me already. And uh, I think it was a good, it was a good test, like I said, you know, Aslin, you know, being able to boost her confidence and, you know, boost her skills a lot. I think she did really well in the moot court, you know. We were able to keep her keep her calm, keep her confident, and she, she absolutely slammed it, you know. And uh, I, was, I was a bit gutted to see uh, that Martin overtook her in the rankings, at least on mine. So uh, that was a bit of a letdown. So Martin topped your ranking? Martin topped Aslan's ranking. He's in second oh. now for me. Yeah, yeah, for me too. Yeah, he's second. I mean, uh, get Aslin asked Gabe, like, wait a second, you told me that it was my best performance, I was not nervous, that was the best delivery I, you know, gave in courtroom, so why my ranking went down, because I was up before. Then uh, Gabe says that, uh, yeah, you did really well, that there's no question about that, but Martin is exceptionally good. So I think that says, I mean, yeah, Martin is a jerk guy and stuff, but, you know, his lawyer skills are still really good, I mean. Uh, it's after just after MC, so he is uh, again neck to neck a competitor with MC. So I'm really waiting for when the competition gets really hard, and it's gonna be Martin versus you know MC. That's gonna be super awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be an absolute throwdown. If there's one thing I love, it's Martin's jealousy constantly growing for the MC. Just to see how you where that, that we're outshining him, he's just getting more and more jealous, and he, it's gonna be his downfall. I guarantee it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, that's I can see that. But I think he can uh, still top if we don't play the diamond scenes. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. Or maybe at the end, Aslin can top because that's what happens. I don't think an antagonist character can top it because um, that that's what happened in high school story also. The prom, there were also other people in prom king or prom queen race, but um, the, the evil ones were there too, but they didn't win it if you don't spend diamonds. So uh, your friends win it. So I think Aslan is going to win this race at the end if you don't play enough diamond scenes. But if you play the diamond scenes, definitely you're going to win. We'll have to see for that, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I think the way they're doing it is if you play the diamond scenes, you stay on top. But I think overall, I think you'll end up getting top ranking toward the end based on the little traits you get, you know, where, where you pick certain um, choices that gives you either a plus on strategy, anti-bully, law. I think based on mainly those specific choices will determine your actual ranking. And the diamond scene is just a boost to keep you on top. But overall, I think you can still make the top rank at the end of the story or the end of the competition. Yeah, I agree with that. That, that would be, yeah, I'll be eager to see that because, yeah, how they go with on, go, go on with that. And that's... It's a new game pl- gameplay feature, so we'll see. You know, they they give a sign before lots of options, so we need to investigate. So to investigate, we need to spend diamond scenes. So yeah, uh, those are going to be crucial, I think, um, at the end of the book. Um, but beside that, you know, mood court was really awesome. I think there was a celebration part that was really awesome too, and then I think um, we directly go to a second case um, that that was um, not that much described. But we get a diamond scene with, uh, it, it was another no strings attached, um, one night stand, I think. And um, uh, forgetting his name, uh, but he was like, I, when I first saw him, the firefighter guy, 
I thought, wow, he's love interest, permanent love interest. I thought maybe it's a late introduction of a love interest, like uh, Oliver in Distant Shores, or uh, you know. So, but it was again one night stand, uh, not one night, just uh, no strings attached in the daytime. So, how did you like about that scene and that introduction of that particular firefighter character? I was really interested to see it. I did not actually put the diamond scene for that one. I, uh, I uh, let's just see. I think I'll be uh, picky about my one night stands for a bit. Um, but overall, I did like the character of the firefighter Tyler. I think his name was. He's a strong, passionate person who really wanted to help us with this case. It was a, a pro bono case, so basically where the lawyers sometimes take cases for free of no charge to the to certain clients, and it was like a. I think they were all smaller cases for each of the different lawyers. So Martin got one, Aslan got one, we got one, different scenarios. And we had to present them in, you know, the best way possible. Like, we have to go through a varies of trials. But overall, I did like the character. You know, he was, you know, like I said, he was, he was kind, caring, compassionate. He gave crucial evidence about it. And you didn't actually have to play the diamond scene for it. He gave you it willingly anyway. But he... And he even said he'd be willing to testify. So overall, I think they introduced to say it was just a, a side character, a uh, one night stand guy. I think it's just a bit of a shame because they introduced such a such a nice character that I think could have had uh, maybe a nicer impact on the story. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I see him, I remember. <clears throat> excuse me. So he remembers me of Rafael from Open Heart because he was also at first uh, a paramedic and he used to jump for to save other people so he remembered me of him and when i saw him it's really rare when you see someone like him as a side character because you know specifically allies they're that you know like gorgeous or like they have that spe speciality but the speciality he had it was um i mean i thought maybe he's gonna be a permanent uh, ally in this book but oh well yeah so, but yeah, it would have been super awesome because if you were a permanent ally, because um, like I said, uh, even a lot of people who would, would be even forgetting Gabe or, um, you know, and would be going after him if he were a permanent ally. And it, there, there could have been a really nice story plot, you know. I don't see why uh, MC couldn't get help from a firefighter guy um, once or twice while solving cases, just like we did in Open Heart also. So, you know, our friends would have been more extended, sort of. You know, that, that, that would have been a really great scenario. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the way they're going with these uh, side characters, but they, I do think they could still add in a couple side characters to keep on as, like, strong friends or personalities. And uh, I believe I did actually see this on someone's Instagram. If you actually do flirt with the fireman, it makes Gabe actually a little jealous. So, uh I yeah, think that actually yeah. kind of fuels his fire a bit if you if you're aiming for him to be your love and trust, which uh that'll be lucky for you. But then uh, yeah, the cases except the cases themselves were really interesting. You know, small small accidents that turned out to have bigger plots in them. It was really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think Gabe's jealousy it was uh, mainly pointed out because uh, you know Gabe is not showing much uh, of uh, you know like in any of um, uh, in Queen B, uh, what was there the professor they they have a night uh, one night a main character and then they start pulling back pulling back but but then in this case you know we didn't even share a kiss with um, the um, uh, Gabe our boss. So Gabe is kind of getting drawn toward our MC, then he's pulling back because he knows it could be really scandalous. It, could, it is not what he should be doing. So I think it's um, darker even, you know, it is even uh, more, um, you know, forbidden than any other love interest MC um, relation. So, and then they pointed out that, you know, that Gabe gets jealous. So it's just, you know, having a hint that, wow, Gabe really cares about uh, our main character and how much he likes. So, you know, there when you're not having those scenes, so it matters like how those small parts, through those small parts, they represent Gabe's wishes um, or Gabe's um, sort of... Uh, like Gabe is attracted toward MC, so I think that's what Charles has tried to do with, uh, you know, showing uh, with that particular scene where they try to show Gabe's jealousy for uh, MC, you know, or M MC flirting with a firefighter guy to, um, you know, get some details out of him.
Yeah, he, uh, he doesn't really hide it well, but one thing I will give him credit for is how he's able to pull himself back and stay professional. I mean, given it's such a, such a serious job and, you know, with the, yeah. like you said, the possibility of a serious scandal, he's doing what he can, but, you know, there's only so much he can do with how much he's becoming attached to the main character for his skills, his passion, his emotion, or her. And uh, I don't think he's going to hold back much longer. Yeah, because we're coming toward chapter seven or eight. I think from chapter nine, we can see like they're, you know, getting closer, getting seen. I remember playing Save the Date and there was uh, Justin. So after chapter nine, we started having scenes with him but that we didn't have before. So, yeah, I think chapter nine could be the boundary, you know, like um, from, you know, just, you know, just um, judging from the history of Charles's books. Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, you know, boundaries, but uh, we're only so early on into the book. There's still so much to happen. I mean, yeah, we'll have the big case, but I think, like I said, it might be something similar to It Lives, maybe 50-50. 50 stuff actually then again that was made more that was mainly more plot than love story but still it could go 50 50 story and then you know the actual love interest a bit because it does seem to be implying that you know a lot with how they're spending time with gabe and Ashlyn. yeah yeah i think there would be uh, enough scenes because they've already given us uh, lots of options to hook up with random characters like flings and side characters so yeah i don't see why there would be you know two or more than two or three scenes with um mc and uh, the proper allies and um you know just not even intimate but even like uh you know really when we'll get to know each other or even share feelings and stuff. So yeah, there would be plenty of the opportunities. Like I said, this book is pretty young still. So yeah, um, at least 11 chapters are still left. So yeah. Yeah. Endless possibilities so far. I mean, I actually believe because of the big cliffhanger we've been given at the end of chapter five, I think this may be the big case building up now because of the way it was described in the end. Hmm. Yeah. So that that case, um, and the guy, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but he literally runs some um, uh, Magro Brian. I mean, Magro Brian, the pay the the paychecks they give to their employee, or the way they uh, they're staying afloat, it's only because of that single person. All the donations come from him. That's what I understood. I think I remember. So this is a, and he has some problem and we need to settle his problem. And if we fail, then Magra Brand could be um, under fire, you know, from that guy and we could lose the donation and Magra Brand won't be a Magra Brand anymore. The same Magra Brand, I mean. So this is, yeah, indeed, it's a huge case, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think he's one of their biggest clients. I can't remember what his name was myself, but yeah, he, uh, I mean, Sadie thought it was that she must have, seen it was really important the fact that he was so you know he he was demanding that we get on it but to bring everybody in the entire team you know it means it, it this may just be more than a competition like we may have to actually be working together to keep you know keep this afloat and uh who knows who knows maybe this could be like a bigger case and it might even connect to some smaller cases like um like we said before i'm really eager to see it yeah, exactly. But still, like, the, the case they showed in the trailer, like, the big murder mystery case and where we're going to see uh, uncover dark secrets about something, that's still nowhere near, you know, uh, you know, viewing proximity. So do you think um, it, it could be, again, like, uh, still we need to wait till chapter 11 or 12 to get that case? Like, how, how, how long still? Because I thought maybe when the mood court gets wrapped up in chapter 5, then maybe we're going to see, um, like, we're going to have these side cases, like the one we saw with the help of the fireman. And then, but also, the main case is probably going to be that murder case from here on. But we are getting another case again, and it's a really main case because it's going to keep the Magra Brian floating. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, this uh, this might not even, this doesn't even seem like a celebrity case, but I think, like I am, like I said before, I think this is like a big, like a kind of big upcoming case to kind of mm -hmm. surmise the kind of pressure that it will have. So like a bigish case, not as big as the murder, but something mm -hmm. equally as important with some with some serious consequences. You know, because like in this one, you know, you'll you might lose your client, the firm might go under. 
Whereas if we get to the murder case, it could be even more severe. We could let a uh, a killer go loose. Um, we could, uh, like I said, endless possibilities. So I think this is going to be a this will be an important one. And then I think probably another chapter or two after this. I'd say this goes out for about two or three chapters. We get a chapter break, and we just get hit with another cliffhanger. Maybe with like a headline. Maybe we, maybe we don't even get a text. Maybe we just see it on the news. Or something that you know, maybe this celebrity's been murdered or something. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking we're gonna get dropped on it. Like we're gonna finish this case, something's gonna happen, and then it's just gonna get dropped on us out of nowhere with our minds completely taken off it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if we don't start getting that case, then I think it's gonna be really late. Yeah. So from the sixth chapter, uh, this um, you know, like the um, the donor of Magra Brian, his case is gonna be. I think two, like I said, two or three chapters long. So six, chapter six, chapter seven. And then from chapter eight onward, they need to start. I mean, there, there should be, they had better be planning for that murder mystery case because otherwise I think it would be too late for that uh, case that is probably the center of the book. Uh, it's going to be the main attraction, the center attraction, so to speak. So yeah, because if they start, giving it to uh, the folks from chapter 11 or 12 like they did in foreign affairs then it's going to be really late and um, well then if they end the book at chapter 16 then it would be really rushed so with despite having a really good start of the book just like foreign affairs it would be ending uh, on a you know kind of a um, medium note you know so uh, so it, it's going to be really crucial the next few weeks for this book i, I would say yeah, definitely. Um, I personally think it would be better stretching out to about maybe 20 chapters, 19, 20. And, you know, maybe having that big case, but also some kind of, like, kind of ending for the love interest. So I'd say maybe 16 chapters would definitely be too short. And starting the big case a bit early would be better. Maybe about chapter 9, 8, 9, give or take. Going on to about chapter... 15, 16 maybe, and then leaving the rest, the last four chapters for maybe a small case, and then a bonding with the with the final love interest for a for a kind of ending, or maybe even a um a show for a sequel. Yeah, another cliffhanger for a sequel. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, let's let's hope that um the pace picks up from here. I mean, it has already a pace, but the main case comes um pretty fast because um. Well, we want to see the main case also with this one. So, yeah, let's hope for that. But if, if I ask you, like, what would you be, what was your, um, the highlight for the last chapter of Laws of Attraction book, um, the chapter five? Ooh, highlight. Um, that's a tough one. I guess it would have to be the... By the end of the moot court, where the main character highlights they want to move for a dismissal or they wanted to kind of get off it because their plaintiff, they found out their plaintiff was, since it's slowly coming back to me, their plaintiff was actually trying to defraud the company, so they had to move for a dismissal. And the fact that they were able to figure all that out with the information they dug, like, it was really complex because they he was having... I think it was an affair or getting a relationship with one of the workers and he even went as far as to change a name to an alias which they were able to uncover you know no no not even martin figured that out not the rest of the figured that out frankly and um you know it's just all this complex thinking all this deep digging is what makes you know what makes our main character such a good a good lawyer and such a passionate lawyer making the right choices and the fact that he can just dig in to get all this information and even shock both gabe and sadie I mean, it's just, it's just proving how much of a an amazing character and an amazing lawyer RMC could be. You know, it, it could be the build up to what the main character will need because most likely this with this murder celebrity case, it's going to be huge. It's going to be like a big media attention. All eyes are going to be on the lawyers to do the work, and with with all this impression, you know, and like you know, with with these five lawyers, they're going to have to pick one or maybe two to represent this main character, you know, it's like, I doubt it's going to be a team effort, so Sadie will want to pick the best, and with the fact that she's seen the main character go out of the way and do all this, you know, complex stuff, I, I think it might be quite good. Might actually show what, what happens in the in the coming chapters. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, building the pace, the way they're doing it, you know, with the moot court, then there's another case. So, yeah, it could be really crucial for when the main case comes in, that that's the celebrity murder case. And, yeah, you're right about that. So you chose uh, who did you fight for? Did you fight for the plaintiff or the company? I mean, the corporation. I chose the plaintiff. So uh, this question, and I specifically liked it. I, I want to know your opinion because we were we first started the case as a defendant, right? I'm mean, no, sorry uh, for the pl- for the plaintiff. So we were uh, the prosecution. So now we were doing our job. Now w- our job was to fight for uh, the plaintiff. So now, but at the end, when we find the proof. We said, look, he's guilty. So then I think Martin says, hey, how is, is it possible you're fighting for them? So I think there, I don't remember the exact conversation, but uh, our MC says something like, well, um, we just, um, we, when a real case comes in, maybe we take the case. When we take the case, we go with our heart. We uh, choose the side we believe that has the most potential in. But when we start digging up, and we find evidence, even if we are on the wrong side, we need to admit it and we need to go with the truth because always the truth wins. So something like that, uh, he says. And uh, Gabe and Sadie were, uh, they were Im- really impressed by that. So how do you think about, I think this is a really important thing because um, even if you chose the wrong side, but after getting the evidence, you don't keep defending the wrong the person who is really wrong but you do the right thing that is if that if, even if that means that you need to go against your client and that in this case I, I also was uh, fighting for the plaintiff uh, for the pro- prosecution I was a prosecution lawyer so uh, how did you feel about that because I think it was a really good statement that uh, um, we, we got from this part yeah I agree it was it was a tremendous statement. It was, I think, in fact, Sadie kind of turned it she, um, to be the actual lesson of um, learning about the court. And, like, you know, you can't, you can't, well, one thing being you can't win every case, but not only that, that you you can't just, um, it's about morals as well, you know. You, you're not always going to pick the right client and picking, you know, you got, well, you don't really get to pick, but, you know, you get, you get given who you want to be represented by, by, by the company. But, um, yeah, it was it was a good moral test, you know. I mean, they they in a real scenario, possibly with other lawyers, they would have not dug it up, or they would have dug it up, and they would have tried to bury it, a bit like the other case from before with the uh, uh, Kyong something, where they uh, had the uh, chemicals in the water, and then it suddenly just got buried out of nowhere. And I actually even said with the main character that with with someone like Kyong and their power, they tried to bury it. That's what I'm kind of getting at. You know, they tried, they would have tried to bury it and they would have kept defending until the deep, until they would have succeeded in defrauding the company. And then, you know, if they figured it out, they may, would have got bad. But no, they realized that they, they are doing good. You know, the firm does good. I mean, they can't always, but they do when they can. And with the fact that they can go digging so deep for information and they find out the truth, you know, they, they just, in the end of the day, all our main character and the law care about is, um, you know, the law. They care about going for the truth, whether you're on the right side or the wrong. You'll be able to find out if you're on the wrong side with the fact that you can dig this deep for information and expose it correctly. Yeah, I mean, it matters that at the end you speak the truth. You, you are on the right side, yeah, and um, on the side of truth. Um, also, yeah, Gabe, I think they said, uh, MC asks Gabe that, well, when this case was originally um, fought, how did you find, I mean, how the Magra Brian, how they found out about this evidence? Then Gabe says, Who, how do you think I became a senior partner or something? So, well, that also, mean, that also meant that Gabe fought that case when he was uh, uh, in his early days in Magra Brian. He fought the case, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess you could say that. Um, you know, he... He will have had experience in doing all this, you know. He made partner so early on. He had to have had or done some exper- like had some really good experiences and had some really good skills and and just you know be able to just to be able to um to be able to make that partner so fast with the skills he has and how much he can accomplish. He would have had to do something in the moot court that would have absolutely blown away what they could never have expected, you know. Like uh, I think one of I think when the character sat down with Ryan, he said, you know. 
fight the case without fighting. <laughs> not looking in the way they're supposed to, going out of bounds, doing the opposite. You know, do, just doing the unthinkable, and that's what gets you. That's what gets you there. And then Gabe must have done that at one point. Maybe it might have been a different scenario, or it could have been the same scenario, but it will have been one with the same, with the same magnitude of the one we've got now. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so how excited? I mean, um, sorry. I mean, uh, do you have any prediction for the next chapter? I mean, how wh- how do you think the next chapter uh, could probably go, or uh, what could happen? I mean, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? The next chapter. I'm re- I'm just really anxious for you know we've got this this it seems to be piling up with the big cases like you said with the pace we started off small we've gotten this big moot case practice now we're gonna probably get thrown right into the gutter with this big case this real case and I think you know this is gonna be the big pace that we need and then we'll have a break and then we'll finally dive into the real to the real big case so I think this next one I know we said last time this next one's gonna be the decider but I think this will be an even bigger one. With you know what's at stake because it's, this one's not practice. Real it's case. A real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is going to be a real magnitude for it. So I'm really anxious for this next chapter. Yeah, yeah. I also think that, like you said, it's a real thing, and I think the next one is going to be specifically important for our ranking. I mean, and uh, also, yeah, it's important for our com. I mean, the macro prime, the whole corporation too, because if um, it, it if there's not going to be any macro prime, then we need to go back to our hometown again. So we need to save it at any cost. So that's the really important thing. But also, uh, it's a tough challenge, and whoever is going to step up in this tough challenge, he's going to be up in the ranking, and he's going to get a lot of praise from both Sadie and uh, Gabe. So, and it could really decide. Um, I mean, 40% of the fate of that person in becoming the senior partner, I think the spot we're fighting for. So, yeah, it's going to be a really important chapter. And how we, uh, I think the diamond scenes are going to be important because we need to play some diamond scenes to uh, dig deeper and to get the sign beside some option to seal the case and win the case like we have done in the previous chapters also. Yeah, but still, like I said, it's no mystery, murder mystery case, but yeah, but it's still, uh, it's going to be a big uh, heavyweight case. It's a, it's a big league. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to have some real stakes and it's going to require them to go all in, but I think this may actually be the final decider on who gets the partner. And, you know, depending on how the main character does, as opposed to uh, <clears throat> Martin, uh, we'll have to go all out. If we want to get this partnership and, uh, well, quite frankly, rub it in Martin's face. At least I want to. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. I, I can't wait. And it's only uh, Wednesday, isn't it? So not long yeah, uh, Wednesday, yeah. I think um, it's going to be your uh, 5.30 or something, your time. 5.30, 6.30. I think they kind of bumped it up by an hour. Yeah, so around that time it's going to be released. Yeah, it should it's be good. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. I mean, I usually read on Thursdays. Um, so yeah, uh, either way, it's going to be fun. Mm. Yeah, like I said, the magnitude, you know, the build up, the pace. I think so far, Laws of Attraction is still shaping up to be a good book, and I, I'm really hoping it stays this way. Hopefully, we do not. Do not have a foreign affairs repeat for the love yeah. of God. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, um, so far so good. The competition and everything. I just uh, hope that main thing they showed in the trailer, and I'm still guessing that that's the main part. That's attraction, and that's gonna. Uh, even if uh, some people are not playing, when that part comes in and people see these on Instagram and other places, if those players would start playing for that particular attraction. So yeah, I hope that's not rushed. That is not delayed. And that just comes uh, at, at a proper time. And that would be, like you said, um, chapter eight, chapter seven, or, in, you know, somewhere there. Because uh, other than that, it'd be pretty late. And that would be super awesome because we'll be solving this high heavyweight case. And after that, we'll be solving another heavyweight case. And that'd be, uh, that would probably last for the rest of the book. And uh, it could pro- possibly decide the fate of a book two even. So excited for that to see how this goes, where it goes. Mm, yeah, it's it's gonna be a, 
it's going to be really good. And uh, I've seen a lot of a uh, lot of um, you know reviews on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Seen people their reactions, and I've even been talking to people in the uh, Choices Insta fandom group chat that's uh, started up. So that's that should be a good discussion as well. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, and uh, next up, a very scandalous proposal. Uh, this is a new book that just really it's a VIP book and um, it released last week for general public. I and uh, it was uh, supposed to release last month, but for several reasons it got delayed. I think there was a problem with the last chapter, um, so they fixed it and they now have released it. And like I said before, they're releasing it one chapter every week. So that's a new initiative they're taking for VIP books. Um, and I think it's really su- uh, going to be successful. But from the first chapter, what you read, um, what, what's your in- input about, what's your output about this uh, first chapter and the genre, the con- a very scandalous proposal? Uh, how do you like it so far? I, um, I really like it so far. You know, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting story. Um, an American reporter coming to England to try and expose a, a royal, well, a royal family, a kind of royal family's yeah. secret. You know, that's, that is something really, really interesting, well, to me and a lot of others. There's one thing that's always been interesting to me. It's about people's secrets. Well, people's secrets. Some people have you know, like, deep, deep law behind them, and this gives, this has given the writers, like, when they made this, a perfect, a perfect time to go really all in on the lore of the story, of the characters, the background, everything, and it's, it's just been really, it's, it's really interesting to see, and just see what we're able to uncover, and what we're able to create, as well as gaining that love interest, you know, gaining the story, but also to just make something, like, just find something really special, you know, it's, who knows what we'll find it should be really interesting yeah I mean you know we oftentimes see on the news like this reporter uh, yeah it's a royal family I think they're mentioned somewhere like a duchess or something so I think it's a royal family kind of but they also mention them as aristocracies so aristocracies but um, yeah royal family kind of um, um, so yeah I mean we see on the news like some reporter digging deep or gets blamed for something, you know, uh, or they even go deeper to dig the secrets or scandals that are in the royal family or in the aristocrat family. So this is this is going to be a if uh, someone was always interested about this kind of books. So it's going to be super awesome, full of scandal, full of mysteries, and um, it's going to be super awesome and. Yeah, the the it's a new genre again, and I can't wait for it uh, to see how it turns out. Just one chapter has been released, so it's a long way to go. Uh, yeah, and looking forward to next chapters. Yeah, I mean we had uh, we had quite a handful in the in the first chapter. You know, where we had to start somewhere, so we take the uh, the house tour, which is very bland, not much information onto actual secrets. Until, of course, you meet the mysterious character behind you, which is your love interest, Simon or Ava Montjoy, I think it's pronounced. Um, you know, you, you dive in a bit. Of course, you don't know who they are at the time. You know, it's just this mysterious person. You know, you just know their name. You know, you go through the kitchen, you go through the gardens. They tell you a little bit of information, but nothing too, too important. And then only to find out that uh, you kind of got, uh, you kind of got played. You know, you, you were walking around with the future Duchess that you didn't even realize. And and she just kind of, yeah, she just played you. And then when you confront her, she just she just mocks you about it. It's quite irritating to see. And it's, I don't know why, but I, I just find it even funnier when I try and imitate it with a British accent. It's just really funny. Um, and then you, then you just, you want to dive in more to this. And you go even more into the story. To, to hear her talking with her grandmother, to hear that she is not actually such uh, the uh, the perfect royal. She's in fact a bit of a troublemaker. You know, she uh, crashed a one hundred thousand pound Jaguar, or at least punted it in a lake. <laughs> so that was a <laughs> that was a bit of a funny sight. Well, um, I think she took the blame for it anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. And then uh, hard. Yeah. Yeah, and then she had uh, a, a past engagement gone wrong, and you know. 
her grandparents really want her to settle down, take over the estate, continue their bloodline. But of course, she doesn't seem serious about anything, and she decides, you know, you don't, you shouldn't have to do that. And they may have to hand it over to her cousin, Hugo, who is described as not a very good person, and who would, whose intentions are to get rid of the grounds and do something different, like maybe just get something for more financial benefit for him. And it's 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 a rough patch for her, you know. Not to mention the fact that you almost get caught if you're unlucky. I don't know. I haven't actually seen what happens if you get caught. I can't imagine it goes well. Especially with your Nigel, who has a bit of a standing from his family, I believe. And then, you know, you uh, you kind of escape away, find a little pub, have a drink, calm down, try and figure out what you're going to do. You know, you can't, you've hit a kind of curveball here. Um, you try to find some more information on this mysterious... You know, Ava Montjoy, you know, she's rarely spoken about. She's rarely got images. You find out one thing on the internet, which is that she played for a cross team, I think it was. But that was about it. And then suddenly a knock on the door. Who do you find? <laughs> Ava Montjoy or yeah. Simon. With, in fact, a very scandalous proposal. She wants yeah. you to marry her or him to marry you. And boom, yeah. you're, you're left with a cliffhanger. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was a uh, really I couldn't get wrap my head around that because you know if, if you think closely, why would someone who you have just met, who is from the royal family, who you uh, almost argued with, and who you can just kill after the conversations you had, who you probably uh, and you guys probably uh, Loki hit each other. And even one is American journalist digging for the secrets of their family and they're, you know, proposing that same journalist to marry them. I mean, yeah, it's like uh, lots of questions you're left with when this chapter ended. And um, yeah, it it, would be super awesome. Like, what is the how MC reacts to that and what um, uh, the the Moncha, Ava or Simon, what they tell MC as to why they're proposing her. So it's, it's going to be super fun. Yeah, if anything, it's given the main character the high ground at this point, you know. Um, at this point, she seems, she has, in hindsight, when you look at it, she's got some stuff, well, important things to lose, has uh, Ava or Simon, and then, you know, you've, you've got the upper hand, you're looking for information, she's, she might be willing to give it to you, you know, might, she might just want, she might just want to uh, make a partnership, who knows, but, you know. I can't think of why else she wants to marry it, other than the fact that she need she just needs someone to marry, like for the for her grandmother's approval of the estates. They did yeah. mention that she was next in line, and if she doesn't get married or doesn't seem serious, she can't move it on. So, if anything, she's just doing it for her own benefit. But she really needs the main character's help more than yeah. the main character really needs her. Yeah, like an arranged marriage, like for something, you know, uh, strings attached. Like You get me, let's get married, we get this, and then we get separated, something like that. Could be that. Yeah, except uh, at least you don't have to worry about um, a certain nanny coming in and uh, messing the whole thing up. You get, you have genuine feelings for them. Hopefully, who knows? I mean, even the main character, well, at least in the kit. well, when we were in the kitchen... She ended up saying things like, uh, you know, just blatant asking, are you uh, single? And it's like, one thing I, one thing that interested me is like how the, uh, how they kind of portrayed the British saying how American they are for saying that. That's kind of funny, you know, just how American you are for blatantly asking for a number or my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually quite a nice little laugh. But I yeah. know for definite there's uh, quite a few uh, British jokes in there that are definitely going to make me laugh, I hope. But I, yeah. I did like the first one when you were discussing your char- describing your character. It had a nice funny message for finishing your character design. Oh, I, I was going to say that. I was going to... Uh, are you looking posh, uh, Brill, right? Yeah, it's either Brill or it's something else. It was... Uh, I, uh, I have to say, I do... I've heard people say Brill a lot, and then that's for the other. That's pretty common. Yeah, do you use, do, do you use posh a lot? No, I, I personally don't know. Uh, a few people do it. I guess it kind of depends where you come from, uh, what type of uh, society you kind of grew up in in parts of uh, the UK. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, uh, I, I was kind of hoping to ask you that, and you mentioned it. I, I, I so you, it caught your eye too. Yeah, I was like, wow. So posh, and then there was an option. Yeah, I, I look brill. So yeah, I was, I was like, wow, this is something good stuff. I mean, if that's how this whole book's gonna go, then uh, it's gonna be exciting. Yes, yeah, it, it should really be a good laugh, as well as you know, being a deep story. You know, I can see plenty of places for jokes. I mean, you know. Like I said, depends where they come from in the in the UK. You know, everyone's different, but well, everyone's more or less a good per- good person. You know, just gotta get to know someone. You know, just don't judge a book by its cover. A bit yeah. like uh, I believe Ava kind of judged the main character, but yeah, just just, just prove the fact. Don't judge a book by its cover. Get to know someone before you judge them, regardless yeah, exactly. of who they are or where they come from. Exactly. I, I totally agree with that. And uh, one thing for sure, like you, you totally do, you know, uh, on your stream, one, uh, you know, playthrough of this book with uh, uh, while reading this, because I would be really exciting. I'd be really excited to hear, you know, you play that and uh, with the British accents and, you know, performing the specific, you know, uh, like how Ava would be saying that or how. So I, I, I can, because definitely in my mind still, uh, that uh, you know, w- I, when I read that, I never read that with a British accent because it's just it's not something that is in my mind. So yeah, it would be really awesome to hear that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. I mean, I'll be honest, my very of British accents isn't that great, but I could probably work on it. Yeah, because whenever I read Ava, I just go back to or you know other characters. I just go back to you know. Like maybe it's set in California or something, so my mind goes back to some, you know, those kind of TV series. So yeah, but I can never imagine them, you know, in British accents. So yeah, it'd be really awesome, like I said. Yeah, yeah, but I I look forward to the book. It's uh, it's definitely gonna have a lot of lore behind it, and uh, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how it all out comes in the end. Yeah. Because I think at the first we see we're getting married with uh, Ava or Simon. And then people are saying, wow, look, a reporter from America is marrying. I don't like that. And the other family members who look really shitty and uh, others are talking and you are dressed in a really, you know, marriage gown. So I think they made us buy that dress. And for the, just that, you know, split second, they show that scene. And then we, uh, they go back six months early or something. And then we're coming from America to uh, Britain to London and then Nigel picks up so yeah I, I'm hoping for I'm waiting for that moment when we're gonna get married I think it's gonna be late in the book uh, you know uh, chapter six or something but it's gonna be fun yeah no like I said uh, that kind of points back to what I said at the start you know we've got all these royal class British wealth people coming in all they see is this is just this commoner coming through in kind of jeopardizing mm-hmm how you know how they are and how they live and you know they're all judgy and snarky about it because they think they have they think they have you know power when in retrospect just because you have money doesn't mean you have power they think they have power and they think they're better but in hindsight they're no better they're no different from an average person the fact that they've just got money so you know i'd be interested to see the main character take them on you know stand up for herself and just stand up for well everybody really yeah yeah, I mean, how different, and specifically also, you know, I'm looking forward to how the royal family is going to treat uh, our MC and how everyone's going to be there. What kind of, like, we know about uh, the music, uh, the per, uh, the grandma of uh, the Duchess, I think, that's what they mentioned uh, her as, uh, of um, Simon or Ava, but we don't know about other characters, we don't know how Hugo is, or other uh, royal family's characters are so i'm really excited to meet them you know how are they designed and what kind of other characters we meet when we go to pub and stuff because uh we don't have much books set in in other places uh, other than us and some uh other us places so it's gonna be really fun it's a different book yeah yeah like i said it's nice to uh change up the setting a bit it shows shows england in a quite nice like a nice perspective, you know, sunshine, rays, a lot. One thing it, it'll be mostly is quite polite-ish, you know, with the fact that it's all royals. They all speak of a, 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 a certain sophisticated, well, just sophisticated where they speak. So, you know, it'll be mostly polite, you know, they, 
trying to play along, but overall it'll be the snarky comments, hiding, yeah. you know. Dry not, humor. Yeah, the sly humor, but you know, I mean, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe this actually comes out as well to be something, hopefully, more with her, but you know, it just becomes more than just the more than just the proposal on an arrangement, maybe it becomes something stronger, something real. And uh, it'd be interesting to see if her family would accept that. Mm, yeah. I mean, they will start it as just a, you know, just a proposal, just um arrangement. But then, like you said, it could turn up uh, to, you know, end up as a real thing. Who knows? Yeah, and uh, I, just, I can't wait, you know. There's, like I said, endless possibilities. I'm just kind of wishing I could have read through the whole thing way before. It's, just, it's, it's <laughs> such an interesting book so far, and... Uh, I'm. I really love the love interest as well. The uh, I've got the third female Ava model. It's absolutely beautiful. I think a lot of people on the fandom really like her as well. Yeah, I think uh, she is the um, white one. I think right. Yeah, she's the. Like, she got the blonde, longish hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, exactly. Yeah, this one's really. Yeah, nice. I chose her too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's the uh, fan favorite for everybody. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's going to be fun. And also, Nigel, he's a great friend of MC so far, you know. Yeah, he's an interesting character, you know. We uh, we learned a bit about him in the car ride um, to the uh, estate. You know, he, um, something happened a little while ago, and he's, like, saying it's forever in her debt. But, you know, she's, like, not passing it off. You know, they're, they're great friends. They're at this point. They're reunited. Let's see what else goes, you know what I mean? He's he's loyal. And that's one thing you always want, always want in a friend, and always you'll find very uh very helpful you know it's helpful to have a loyal friend have them by your back by your side make sure you're not going through things alone they'll want to help you anywhere even as a little nickname for the main character which was uh toffee was it i think it was yeah, toffee. Yeah. Toffee, toffee, yeah. yeah which was the uh same name for uh which was the name he got from a i think it was a, a, a specific coffee that they got from a from a like a coffee joint i'm, I'm not too sure but, uh, yeah, I think it's deepest coffee or something. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, um, but uh, it, it's really interesting to see. You know, you've got this long-lost friend who, in turn, is actually British as well. So he has his, he has his own standing, I think, in the family because he managed to arrange the uh, the uh, tour itself. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see what kind of person he is as well. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. That is super awesome. And then we also see at the end moment that uh, someone calls from our office back in states, back in the states, and they ask us if we get if we have got some major leads in the family, uh, Monchai family, because I think our main character promised back in the office in the states that we're gonna dig deep into this royal family, this Monchai family, the aristocrat family, and we're gonna find some secrets. And if we find it, they make they make it clear. Look. You have proposed the scandal, and if you find something, you're gonna get promoted. If you don't find something, then your position will be in jeopardy in the you know press office in the states. So it's it's a big challenge for MC too. Yeah, yeah, um, I actually believe it was um, it was based on one of her recent recent jobs where she uncovered some secrets, and uh, she actually appealed to the uh, board of creating a book. I think she uh, she's so she's trying yeah. to create a book on the family. And they wanted to go for the idea because they think it will be very profitable. There's nothing, nothing more juicy than a royal family's deep secrets being exposed in a story. You know, it's one thing people would really want to see. And um, you know, they uh, they're really counting on it. And who knows? Might not even be one book, depending on how many secrets they dig up. Could be multiple. Could be a very, very, very financially benefit for her. Yeah, yeah, the book they mentioned, yeah, because, you know, whenever there is something related to royal family, people literally just, uh, they get glued to the TV, and even if you see, like, if something related to royal family, some princess, they, they some news come up on the TV, you know, people generally watch it more than any other news, you know, because it really gets their attention, and, um, like, you know, they, they don't move from BBC, <laughs> so the same way, if um, MC gets something here, so that would be, the book is going to be super popular yeah you know like i said um it'll all be i think it'll be in the, i think it'll be america based you know there's nothing about the bit of deep history about a about a royal family from another country you know it's uh 
gonna be really interesting to see, you know. Nothing, nothing like a really juicy book on the uh, secrets of the Montejoys. Mont I don't know why I keep calling it Montejoys. It's Montjoy. I keep thinking there's an I in because of the J. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. It'll be, it'll be really interesting to see. You know, I'm interested to see a bit more about Ava's family as well, and a bit more about Ava. You know, because she's really, she seems yeah. like a nice person, and you know, maybe that, maybe that might be a nice person. She yeah. seems very, uh, what's the word? I, I don't want to say robotic, but it's kind of the way she speaks. She speaks like kind of like a robot going off of logic. Like with her responses, they seem really logical and they seem how, uh, just like directly how the main character is acting and how things are. It's, it's quite interesting to see what she could do. Uh... Yeah, she's still, uh, I think she still uh, might be a good person at heart. Yeah. I mean, she is like, you know, coconut, like the hard on the outside, but when you get to know the inside, it's really soft because, you know, how Ava, you know, when we just meet, we're strangers, uh, they treat us differently. And when uh, we just uh, get to know her, like for who re she really is, like she's uh, the Moncha family's next heir. Then she acts completely differently. And uh, I don't know, probably she had some perception about journalists from America or something. But also she puts her name in danger for her friend. So that was also really interesting. So, yeah, I mean, she has multiple sides and it's quite logical also. So, yeah, it would be really awesome when MC and Ava, their, their bond gets stronger. You know, they get to know each other really well. So that would be a really good point, a good, uh, you know, thing to read in this book. And I'm waiting for that. Yeah, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, for, I think this book still has a lot of potential. I believe there was a lot of backlash about no sequel. Um, but who knows? I mean, with the with the fact that they, uh, I don't know if they, I can't remember if they actually announced they're not making a sequel, but who knows? They could change their minds after after this because this was a vip book not everyone has had vip supposedly this had really good reviews so i'm, I'm thinking after they release the main one they'll see what reviews they get and there could be a potential for a sequel even though i can't remember which book it was i think it was the unexpected heiress which is which people have counted as the unofficial sequel which i believe continues on in a different way so but like i said it, depending on the reviews unless they've already announced it there could be a possibility they may make a sequel depending on how uh, the book goes for everybody else. Yeah. I mean, for no, I mean, there are very few VIP books. It has been, it was um, uh, disclosed, the VIP section just last year. And um, so, so it's pretty, it's still a pretty new concept, but, you know, no VIP books have a sequel. So, well, if it does have, so then it would be a trailblazer for VIP books, but we'll, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. But yeah, your logic is right, because also like every week, so they're keeping the players on their toes. And then if they like it, oh, wow. So this is an exclusive thing you're releasing every week. I like it, you know, throughout the, you know, through the halfway, if they see a lot of people are playing this, people are getting, they're getting good reviews. They're getting, um, you know, it, it's uh, putting money in their boxes. Then they will say, okay, all right, let's go and make a sequel for this because this is popular and this is getting good reviews. It could be the case. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do hope. Cause, um, I do have high hopes for this book. I, I'm loving the characters so far and it would just be a shame not to see it go on in at least, at least one more book, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I'm also waiting for to you know witness the chemistry between Ava and the main character because this is gonna be really awesome because we don't have much chemistry like that because uh, you know it's sort of hate love relationship you know for, from the start if we I'm like we just uh, because it's an agreement also just uh, you know no strings attached just uh, benefits just for a marriage arranged but from there uh, you know building real relationship from there it's a really we, i don't think we have much of those books so yeah i'm really looking forward to that chemistry yeah and as well we also have the chemistry that could build between her family and maybe even her friends or maybe meet some of her friends you never know might have uh... I was about to say siblings but i'm not so sure if she has any siblings who knows? Like I said, you know, there's, there might be a lot more to a family than we know. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Maybe a potential another love interest also. Yeah. Mm. 
I, I think it's a, I think it might be a single love and trust uh, to Ava, but uh, I'm not sure. I kind of hope so. I don't really see the main characters trying to bottle down with it, on, especially considering you might be going, you know, you're set, you've been proposed to, and you're going to go through a scandal. You know, you can't really be affording to slip out and you know be with somebody else. So I, I guess I could see it mainly being a single love interest. You know, I mean, yeah. with it being the love interest, I could see that most likely we'll end up together at some point. I really hope they do. Yeah, because if you know it's already scandalous now. If you have another love interest, you're already marrying a royal, and then you go for like it's gonna be. I mean, I don't know. Like uh, he, I mean, main character came here to dig up. Now they would be. I mean, she would be the MC. Would be uh, you know talk of the media, and uh, she'd be creating scandals. Yeah, I get your point. Yeah, it's um, it's just gonna be an interesting book, you know. I mean, the reviews have been great. I just really, really excited to read this book now. Yeah, and I'm again waiting for the next chapter, how it uh, turns around, uh, turns out, and um, uh, what MC is gonna reply. You know, why Ava is proposing our MC, and um, how this is gonna go. What are the conditions? How this marriage is gonna go? How her family is gonna uh, react to this thing? And uh, that we're journalists, and uh, how Nigel what, what's gonna tell really excited, and all the new faces we're gonna see in the next chapter, also. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the uh, reaction is gonna be key. I mean, personally, I think I'd, I'd just I'd just cry out laughing, you know, like, why <laughs> of all the of all possible logic, why would you, a royal, desperately come to me for my help, needing me to marry you? You know, it's like it's, it's, it's a laughable subject, <laughs> so uh, I yeah. can see it not being taken seriously. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so I have one question for you on this VIP book topic that you have been playing some VIP books lately. So I just want to ask you, they're called VIP books. So I, I mean, what is personally from your own experience, do you, what do you think are the differences between VIP books and normal books? I mean, they are VIP, so are they of better quality? And where they differ from the, you know, you, books that are originally released for a general public. And so wh why is that? I mean, is it, why is that? I mean, is it if a VIP, if a book is VIP, that is supposed to be like of a great estimate or of great value or of a high standard. Uh, so like, how should you look at it? And uh, what do you think about that personally from your experience? Because you've read some books. So, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's an interesting one. Um, I guess it would kind of go to the fact that uh, I I have seen some of the VIP books. They are they have seen like to be quite amazing. I think I've seen some reviews of some really good stories. So I guess you could say in a way they're they are the best in. I'd say Pixelberry wants to see them as their best books, so they want them on top, their most prized you know areas of the VIP. So like um, so like. With the idea of VIP, it's not just to read those books, but as well, you know, you get the benefits if you get 10 diamonds every day, an extra two diamonds after reading a chapter. So you, it's a, a good way to get diamonds, you know, to be able to get those scenes and, you know, experience the full story. And it's like one thing as well, it's not just for those books specifically. You can use them to go through your own books because of the one main factor of, of keys having only two keys, although when you do start, I believe you can get three by reading a chapter, but having to wait that time just to read, you know, a book, so over time it can be annoying, you get two keys every, what, three hours, it's an hour and a half per key, so you're going through one chapter depending on how long it is, so realistically it'll take you way over a week just to read one book, and granted you want to read a book and it'll take you time, but not even reading a real book would be that long. VIP speeds that process up by the fact that you can read it chapter after chapter after chapter, and whereas you would kick out what would be weeks of waiting to read one book and, you know, slowly enjoying it, but, you know, getting anticipation to a couple of hours of fully enjoying the book, which is it's still good. You know, most people just want to read the book, and plus they have the fact to replay it. One thing about choices as well, you can replay the book to get the diamonds. Specifically... So well, with VIP, it's good to it's good to farm as well. Um, but for the VIP books themselves, they have out. I have also they. I think they've outdone themselves on most of the VIP books. There are a couple others I think that could have made the list, but I'm glad they didn't because they're such good hits and they're so popular. People just want to read them without having to buy VIP because it is 
yeah, well, less expensive. It's uh, it's quite pricey for a monthly for a monthly subscription. It's uh, it's, it's actually around fifteen pounds in the UK per month, and that's about uh, uh, seventeen, eighteen dollars, a bit more roughly, uh, in the you know the United States, and I'm not sure about euros, um, but uh, yeah, like I said, it's a bit pr- it can be pricey in certain countries, and uh, you know people. Will, People are going through things, especially with like lockdown and everything. You know, might not be able to buy the every month. So you know, it's, it's good that that not many books are VIP. I know VIP players, I think, have been asking for some more books to make their subscription more worth it, which I think they'll do. You know, they have to find that fine line between a good stack, a good stack of VIP books, as well as the fan favorites of the default books. But I, I do, I do like VIP. You know, it, it gives you the chance of because one thing you want to do as well is you want to buy the diamonds. You want to get these, uh, these interesting scenes to boost the story to see the full thing. And it's mainly behind the money barrier. But the way the choices is structured, how I like it, is they have a really good diamond uh, making method. You know, you've got all these challenges. You get, you can get three diamonds from watching the ads, fifteen from a day. Uh, you can get more each time you keep playing. So three days, you get about five. And I think if you watch a full month, you get over a, uh, 60, maybe even 100. And with the added fact of having VIP to um, to keep going through the books without key limits, say, for instance, you finish a book that has a lot of premium choices. You've done all those premium choices. All you have to do is just speed through that book you can just speed through it however you want and you can keep getting diamonds and diamonds. So one thing VIP is good for, you can buy one subscription a month instead of buying ninety pounds worth of diamonds and you can farm a lot simpler. And granted you do need a lot of diamonds if you want to do a full diamond playthrough of a book. But uh, you know, it's not bad buying the occasional few diamonds, but uh, VIP is a good way I will say it's a good way for grinding those diamonds out, getting as many as you can to go through the full book. You know, taking your time, but uh, VIP it, it is good. You know, it, it does have its benefits. I think just needs a few more books. Maybe I'd say a little more extra on the daily diamonds, but VIP is quite a good little feature. You know, it's uh, it also it's also good to show. You know, it's like it supports Pixelberry. You know, aside from the fact of buying multiple diamonds and diamonds, the VIP shows that consistent contribution. And it, it, it's kind of a message to them of how much people love the love the app, love the stories that they're buying VIP to keep going through these stories. And you know, it it, it not only financially benefits them, but you know, it morally makes them feel better. You know, because they you know that their work is paying off, and they want to keep making it, making more, and making it better. So uh, I do think VIP is a good little thing, and they do have some interesting books. But I'd say maybe dim down the price of the subscription. That's about it. Yeah, I agree with you. But one thing I would say, I would really um, congrat, I, I would um, uh, appreciate them for this, and that is, uh, uh, when they first released the VIP book, there were doubts, uh, there were dark clouds about this, whether they're going to release the books for general public or not. But now we know that they're going to release, and uh, and when they first released, I think uh, Hot Couture. There was a question if they're going to release once every year or not. But then we got back-to-back books like um, uh, With Every Heartbeat. Then we are getting now a very scandalous proposal. And the next we're going to get The Unexpected Heiress. So that's the thing that they're going to release for the books. And it's pretty frequently, maybe two or three months gap. So I think that's a really con- nice concept. Like they release the book for VIP players. Now they make some profit from there. V- the people who buy VIP, they play there. But now when uh, it is exclusive, so if you're VIP, you can get the book exclusively. For instance, Slow Burn is releasing now. You want to read the book exclusively, you read now. But if you don't buy VIP, then you need to wait maybe six months some uh, or one year, for instance, depending on when they're going to release or what books are releasing. But eventually, eventually, you're going to get the book at one point, even if you're not VIP. And that's a great concept. So if, 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 either you buy it with your money or wait for it. But you're going to read it, you know? You're going to read it, and that's a great assurance. If they had to do it like there is only a VIP section, I'm going to put VIP books, buy it, and you, we are not going to release it for general public at any cost. That would have been super annoying, and that would have, you know, I don't know. It, it would have been just 
criminal, unfair to be honest. But this is, I mean, what they're doing, it's just, I mean, appreciable. I mean, it's just super awesome. And, um, you know, people can buy this. If they don't, well, all right, we'll just wait, you know. I mean, it's just, um, the you know, your the VIP subscription value is equivalent to wait. That's all it is. And uh, that's why I really like this. Yeah, I guess you could say it's, it is an interesting concept. I guess you could say the VIP is like an early access feature, which most exactly. things do have, in fact. You know, you get these books quite early on. They come out. You read them. Not like LOA, but like something really deep like Slow Burn, which is really burning up right now. I'm really excited for that one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and the, the fact that they would release the books with time on makes it makes it does make it a bit worth worth more worthwhile you know you don't have to buy vip to read these books they will come out for default eventually and they'll keep bringing vip books as like a as just a um an early access but it's not like you can't use the vip for default books you can still go through all the default books without keys you know but uh, it does it does it's an interesting concept you know they get the reviews in they see how people like it um and then they release it to the general public and if not the i mean you can granted this isn't the best choice to do you can go on youtube because there is a specific youtuber who does an amazing job of going through all the stories with diamonds as well so even if you miss out or you want to read the story you can just go on youtube and read and read the story i mean granted it might not be the love interest you want or it might not be you know the name or the character design you want but you know at least you still get to read the story and then you can go through at your own pace if the when the story does come out for you. But if you want to read it and get a general grasp of it and the and the LIs, you know, you can go on YouTube, have a look through it. It's uh it's quite interesting. Yeah. I mean on YouTube, yeah, it's I mean available and even you know, if you want a male LI or certain female LI, so and there are various, you know, play, you know, playthroughs on, available on YouTube where, the, you know, some people have male ally, some people have female ally, some people have male MC. So, you know, uh, you can just pick whatever you were to choose originally. Yeah, the names are going to be different, but almost the rest of the things are going to be pretty much the same, you know. Like, you can get the idea at least. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's, it's still a good process. You know, you, you watch them, you get the playthroughs. I mean, you you can also like say, for instance, you may be skeptical about a story. I mean, yeah, you have the first chapter, but you may want to see the full thing, like diamonds. But you may not want to spend the diamonds because you you're anxious of how the book would be. I guess you could say it's kind of a waste. But you know, you go on YouTube, you can get a general idea of what the story is, and if you think you're gonna like it, go through it your own playthrough. And uh, you know, it's like saying as well with YouTube, you can experience like say, for instance, you might want to see it from a different angle like it lives you know that's got a, that's got some different outcomes you might want to go through that without affecting your gameplay because one thing as well you have to go through the full story yeah. as well yeah. like as well so that is a good thing as well you can go on youtube and get a different outcome and watch the different outcome in a different way or get the different allies and stuff because you know at the end of the day you're still gonna have to you can do yours but you will have to go through the full book and that may take a few days depending on if you've not got vip or if you've got vp it'll still take you a couple of good couple of hours to get through the chapters depending on the story and the choices you have to make you have to pay attention you know it's, so it's pros and cons to it but uh it's still a good tool i mean there is a specific youtuber who does an amazing job um he's gone through every single book so far and he's currently keeping up with loa slow burn and i can't remember the other one I think he's already done a very scandalous proposal before, so yeah, he'll be keeping up with those too. And he, he, I think he's had some good reviews so far. He does an amazing job of, you know, going through, getting different outcomes for everybody. And he's, he's basically just doing it for the people, I guess, who can't really get to where they, like, get to them on their own or the, who want through the story. You know, he's, he's doing a good favor for everybody. Yeah. Uh, which YouTuber? Is it The Lost Guardian? It is Lost Guardian. He also goes by Ab Hero, which is like yeah. an alt account for some second stories. But uh, yeah, it's, it's him. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I mean, in his uh, It Lives outcomes were like, you know, where everybody dies, you know. Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, he, he goes through, he, he gets all the uh, 
gets all the right stuff. Make sure you get the. I think he goes for like the right endings first. Gets all the good stuff, and he mm. also does like on slow burn. I think I did. I walked back through it, uh, opposite to my own playthrough because I wanted to. Because there were two different outcomes. Because there are two LIs in you know slow burn. We've got Julia and Yvette. He's done both. He's doing both of them in because like, there is one chapter where you can choose between them. And he's done both of them, so he does both playthroughs. It's it's really good to see, you know, see him get the get the whole thing. It's like uh, it's like when you're thinking of games like Detroit Become Human. That is a huge game with so many choices and so many outcomes, and it's got the pathways of going through, and you want to get every single one. He's doing the same thing for choices. He's getting all the pathways, doing all the outcomes, getting all the answers, you know, so that everyone can see in different perspectives in their own time. So it's it's a, he does a really good job. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean, yeah, I mean, in Foreign Affairs, he did Aina, and then um, Blaine, I mean, both male and female Blaine, I think he did, and the yeah, and Tidham also, so yeah, like three or four, uh, you know, parts, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it does an amazing job, credit and where it's due. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, when I first started playing High School Story, I used to search on YouTube, and yeah, I used to watch his videos, like, I used to do the exact same thing, like, I didn't have keys, but I would see, like, what diamond scenes I would have, see, I remember, yeah, that was, I think the Lost Guardian channel is pretty new, but the Avirio one is, like, the oldest one, so yeah, uh, there I used to watch the playthroughs of uh, um, the high school story like uh, what diamond how much diamond i need to save or how many how many diamonds uh will be what diamonds since are going to be inter important and so i can save up diamond for that and not waste for you know some other scenes yeah yeah it's uh it's, it's a really good job i mean um i actually used i did it for a witness because that book is long that is a really long book it's i like it but it's a bit too long i think but it is a good book. I I had to, uh, especially if you're playing without VIP. Oh my god, it will definitely take you about a month or two to get through that full book. Oh, but uh, you went through the uh, witness. Yes, I've, uh, the witness was actually my second book. I I really liked it. It was something a bit. I wanted to try and find something actiony a bit after uh, after the nanny affair. You know, trying to get different all these different genres. Witness was my second book. I I really enjoyed it. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I, I started playing and then I kind of stopped it. Actually, I, I like where we don't have a male ally. I kind of get, um, you know, I, I just kind of, you know, if the storyline is not like really, um, it's not appealing to me super, you know, like, uh, like hugely it's not appealing to me, then I kind of stop playing that. So, but like um, my two first loves, I mean, it uh, appealed to me, for instance, Queen Bee and Nanny Affairs and for instance, A Fairy Scandalous Proposal and Baby Bump even for a long time. So I go for that. But yes, so yeah, yeah, I mean, if it's big even like for lots of chapters and I kind of stop. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll, I'll also go through a book, you know, get my full opinion on it. And if I like it, I'll replay it. If not, I'll just um, put it back put it back on the shelf so to speak um i don't mind witness it's technically two books because it's it's done that they've done that thing where they didn't actually make a second like title they put it all into one title so you'll say witness bodyguard but it'll say book one it'll go on all over to back book two chapter 20 or something i think they might do the same with the nanny affair when it comes out as well but uh it was still a good book it had a lot of deep had a bit of deep lore into it and a lot of a lot of uh Love like the it showed a lot of good love between the characters and uh, I still enjoyed it. it. Was a bit long though to say it was all in one title, but still two books. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, but uh, yeah, witness. I I gotta catch up with witness sometime, I guess, because I haven't played. I mean, yeah, I understand. Um, it was a uh, uh when I first played that I think the love interest is uh, the like the uh, Eli M's relationship, it's again forbidden romance, I think, to some point, and then it goes well. But yeah, it's just I haven't even like ever completed it, so I gotta do it sometime as well. Well, at least you've got the easier job. I've still got to go through Baby Bump, Open Heart, Distant Shores. You got the easy one compared to me. <laughs> I guess you could say. 
yeah baby bump um i actually went to 14 chapters then i don't know why but the book went to uh, the hiders and then i lost my progress for some reason and i was 15 chapters behind in foreign affairs six chapters behind in open heart i caught up with those two books but i I, I didn't think of catching up with Baby Bump because it was not being released at that time. And then when it started releasing, I didn't have the time to catch up with it. And now it's just going on and on. So you know, it's just uh, humongous now to catch up with it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been seeing um, posts and, and uh, pictures of all the different stuff, like some of the different dialogues and the story of how Baby Bump's gone out. And it's it's appealing a bit more to me than the original look of it did, so I'm gonna give it a go through, see what, see if I like it, and see how it goes, and then same goes with Open Heart. That's a really popular book, although I am three full books behind. At least Baby Bump, I've got a fair enough part to catch up on. Then there's all the other stories I've got to go, but, but Baby Bump looks interesting. To be honest, I'm not sh- I'm not sure how I'd feel if they brought out a, tr- a third. I mean, like I said, you know, if they if they brought out a third, it might be good. But like I said, you know, you want to hold it off at the trilogy. Yeah. Don't yeah. bring out those side stories. Just keep it the trilogy or the duo, and you're good. I mean, I liked it till uh, chapter 14. I mean, before, like, all the time our MC was pregnant in uh, Baby Bump, and then we had the delivery in chapter 14. We have the babies, and then it goes to high risk. But after think, uh, I don't know why they are, uh, you know, I think this is the last book for Baby Bump because otherwise they would have ended in book uh, chapter 16 and they would have gone for a book three. But uh, they're just, you know, having the marriage of MC and everything so they can wrap it up as soon as possible. So they're just dragging it. But I think, um, you know, it's still they're dragging it too much. Yeah, r- you're right. Maybe they should have ended right here with a cliffhanger. Then maybe with Craig winning still and... We would take down Craig in the next book with uh, the marriage. It would have could have been in the next book because I think just uh, one book with more than twenty chapters. It's just you know, uh, it's just too much to take. And it was really awesome when MC was pregnant and all the hardships she, she was going through, all the changes she was bringing. It was really wholesome. The small town vibe, everyone coming closer. But I think after that, they just um, it's just um, they're just dragging it. Too much, to be honest, you know. Uh, they should have stopped at some point and gone for book three. Uh, you know, it, that way, they, they, they should have had more space for, you know, to add some new books also. Like, they have a whole new books, like Zombie Books, Crimes of Passion, Nanny of Fear 2, and then um, Raw Lair 4. Um, they have um, Queen Bee 2. So I think they should have, uh, you know, cleared some space for those. But, yeah, uh, I think... Yeah, I think I can kind of see, you know, you've got the first book going through the pregnancy and then the second one meeting this, per- you know, you be- me, being with this person who you care about, you know, starting a family. I can see that start, you know, getting married and stuff. I could probably see it ending off in the second book, you know, they finish off the marriage, they settle down into that. It's just this nice, comfortable life with the family. I, I could see that happening for the second book and then just maybe ending the, I'd say that, I'd say that's where they'd be good going. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. It possibly could happen. And um, speak, yeah. Uh, speaking of VIP books, we started talking about. So Queen Bee, I, I heard somewhere. Um, uh, uh, so Queen Bee was originally a VIP book, but then at least uh, uh, at the end, they just uh, released it for general public. You know, uh, that, that's what I heard. I think Kyle mentioned it when he used to hold his talk show. So he said that this was um, like Queen Bee was this. So, well, Queen Bee is a VIP quality book, right? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, from I haven't actually read it myself, but I have seen a lot and a lot of reviews on it. I've seen some dialogues, and it, it is a really interesting book. And uh, I would say it definitely is a VIP quality. And the fact that they've brought out back to the general public was a really good move for them. I'd say, like a bit with the uh, a very scandalous proposal. I'd say it was a good choice on them. Yeah, exactly. Right. So um, coming to slow burn, you are. So what are your thoughts on how the story is progressing so far, and your thoughts on the last few chapters of slow burn? And um, I'm not quite keeping up with it, but I think uh, there is a tension going on with. Evite or Everett, the hot-headed, hot-headed chef, and um, and still so, like some people are also saying it's uh, overly e- Evite or Everett dominated Julia or uh, uh, 
the male counterpart of Julia, Julianne, I think. They don't get much, um, you know, diamond scenes or much screen time. Uh, the uh, chef, the main chef, hogs much screen time. So what are your thoughts on that overall? So far, the story has been shaping up to be really good. Um, I do like the fact that they keep adding the recipes at, at, the, at the end of some of the uh, chapters to be able to be created, you know, in the real world and see how they'll be tasted. That's really interesting. The story itself has been shaping up to be really good. I mean, you know, you've got this, like I said, you've got the story going all around the world. Um, the most, there has been a lot of tension in the most recent chapters. We had um, Zara, the TV production, who has been trying to get us to sabotage Yvette or Everett. Because one thing she sees the ratings for the show going as is the um, is them blowing up, them fuming out of control, because you know the viewers beside the food they like you know they like a bit of drama, so she's been trying to get the main character to do that, and I believe I can't remember, I think I'm pretty sure I tried not to do it, but I think you kind of do it anyway. Uh, it depends, and then you know Yvette kind of uh, in one of the actual in the recent chapter. Not the recent chapter, the chapter beforehand, chapter nine, yeah. I think it was. You're you're in Morocco, Marrakesh. You've got to set up this um, restaurant, but Yvette just takes off, and uh, she's she's doing her own thing, and you're left to do the rest of the show on your own. Which you, depending on how it goes, you, it could be made an unmitigated dis- from an unmitigated disaster to a success, you know. And um, it all works out well. You um. You know, the, the restaurant still receives, it still gets the critic, it still goes well, and you even, you get to uh, reconcile with uh, Yvette in a place. She she's, she feels alone, but you can kind of connect with her, trying to make her feel better before the before you go back to work, so you go finish the actual show. You even end up with a bit of a steamy night from Julia, having a bit of, bit of fun, getting that love interest coming out, which I think was really good to see. You know, we've, we're finally getting those characters back in. And then chapter nine, we're getting ready to move out to the last final show, but you're left with a cliffhanger to find out that Yvette signed out early and left the country. So uh, that actually left a bit of drama. And then in the mo- in the most recent chapter is where I think it's going to come into closure because so far we've um, we fa- because the main character spoke to her the night before she left. Um, she said that you know she she feels overwhelmed that she just wants to go home. And that's when the main character remembered where she went. So instead of going to Paris, where they originally went, we're going to go. We're, go- we're going to go. They've actually gone to Saint Lu, Saint Lucia in the Caribbean, where Yvette's family's actually from, and um, they've arranged to um, to redo the show at her family's restaurant. You know, kind of bring out a legacy. Her her mother and sister are, are they're really they're really up for it. You know. They they want to do this. They want they've been wanting to uh, they wanting to make it make it a nice place for everybody, boost the restaurants range, and they think the show can do that. Especially with the fact that Yvette actually just took off from them. Uh, you actually find out the from her sister Renee, who feels hurt and a bit, bit betrayed because Yvette changed and she just left. She went to Hollywood, became this famous chef, and she never looked back. She never called back on her family or their restaurant. She just disappeared. Um, it was kind of a uh, kind of deep actually, and they then went into um, went into a bit of backstory of how I believe that Flint might not even be her actual real name. It's like Rembrandt or something. She changed her last name to protect to protect to um, hide her family or her past from her, so she could just move on in the future. And then you're just left with the day you and Julia trying to find Yvette, who is a master at disappearing, so it's not going to be happy, or easy, for that matter. I mean, it can be happy, actually. You do... You are given a, a point where you find this little beach, and you can have a little little scene with uh, Julia, just in, you and her having a bit of a moment together. And then, uh, before long, you decide that you just have to go wing it without her, without Yvette, because you can't seem to find her. Because not even the locals could figure out where she was. And the next thing you know... You're going over recipes and things with um, their family and prepping for the next show, but uh, it ends off quite uh, quite interesting. You you get that you find out what happens in the end as well. Um, you uh, you're in your hotel room and you get a visit from someone in the middle of the night. Shocker! Who does it actually turn out to be? The one and only Yvette or Everett, who finds out the show is being 
casted here. She decides to kind of come in, apologize, yada yada yada. But then it starts to kind of get heated because um, she once she finds out um, about her family's restaurant being damaged, she's not happy about it at all. She's furious. She she doesn't want the news or anyone knowing about her family or getting tabloids in it because she believes that they would be they would be just hawking around her to find Yvette herself. So we kind of ended off on a cliffhanger there of Yvette being really mad about her family being publicized after coming back and disappearing on us. So it's been, it was an interesting chapter, chapter 10. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to see how it's going to go out now because there's going to be the rivalry between her and her sister, which is going to be interesting to see as well as, you know, this whole thing about the movie ring, the movie, the TV rings, because Zara's an initial, an initial thought from this idea was to get this story around Yvette, you know, they know about her, about a chef, now they want to dig into her personal life of where she came from. Zara is just absolutely desperate for the ratings and just wants to do what's best for the show. And I believe she has already caused damage, as we've heard from the past and most recent events. I think Zara, the producer, may actually cause more problems before this ends. So it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, um, thanks for describing that, and um, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens next. You know, yeah, it's 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 turning out to be a really nice book, and um, yeah, well, it would be another blast when it releases for the general public from the VIP bookshelf. So yeah, um, thanks for explaining that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I was sorry, I was about to say uh, there will be spoilers ahead. I forgot to mention, but uh, it was just a quick recap from myself. Yeah. I did uh, my quick skim through. I need to go back through it again. It's but it is shaping up to be so interesting so far. We're getting closer. Like most people are getting closer to Julia. Like I'm still I'm still stuck. I mean I I, I wanna be with Yvette, but in the meantime I wanna be with Julia. You know, Julia's just a sweet, compassionate person. She's really kind, caring, she cares about the main character. And on the other hand you've got Yvette, who also cares, who also has this this passion and this fire in her that's really like just really appealing about her. And she does care, especially about the food. You know, two chefs being together, that's, that's a good combo. And it's just like, it's, it's a hard decision. I'm still stuck. I'm only halfway through. Yeah. Yeah, I really like Julia's character too. I mean, if it is um, a nice person, it's a nice ally. But yeah, Julia is like sweetheart. You would fall for uh, them anywhere. You'd like when you're having a hard time, you'd rather have Julia around you to lift up your spirits or to have to give you some confidence. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's just you. You rarely find this. You'd rarely find a um a sweet. Well, I guess you could say a sweetheart. That there'll be types of women like that in the world, but you won't find what you'll very rarely find one who genuinely cares yeah. for you and your. You know how you're feeling. You know, she's she's constantly making sure the main character's okay. You know, because there's all this overwhelming pressure of the show. Yvette, Zara, etc. You know, she's and she's by his side, or by her side, making sure that they feel they feel calmed and they want to. And so far, they they really want to be together in general, but a bit more than Yvette as well, from from just the general perspective of everything. So uh, it depends. On the, even with the love choices from both sides, they still kind of want, I'd say, be together a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's cool. Uh, I will have to see how they wrap it up because this is kind of reaching the end. Um, it's still halfway, but yeah, uh, still like uh, a lot of, I mean, 60% or 70% of the story is out, but uh, the rest is still um, yet, the rest is yet to come. So yeah, excited for that. Yeah, true. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I really can't wait. And uh, I think it's going to be the nice, um, nice story now that's slowly burning up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. No pun intended. <laughs> I've already done about four puns throughout this this throughout this uh, talk, so uh sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, that was a great explanation. You're really passionate about slow burn. That that definitely does yeah, like that. I said, um like I said in the introduction a few weeks ago, it's 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 mm -hmm. such a passionate story that goes deep yeah. beyond mm -hmm. just slow yeah. and you've got these the countries. The, the deepness of the food, of the cultures, the traditions, it's just, it's really interesting and fascinating. It genuinely makes me just want to travel and experience this, and experience the world from a better, better perspective. Yeah, yeah, true. That's absolutely right. All right. 
So that's all I think um, the recent books um, that released in choices this week that we talked about. Um, uh, is there anything else uh, you have mm, to say? Because uh, you know, on my list, I almost checked everything out. Uh, there was the uh, the It Lives Beneath stream from uh, Mrs. Martian Cat that I was keeping up oh. on. That. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chapter that, nine. That's been, chapter nine. That's been that has been thrilling me up a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of forgot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. It lives in it. So. Uh, it's a great book. So uh, first, uh, let me know your opinion and specifically, um, in contrast to It Lives in the Woods, how how far the story is doing so far until chapter nine? Yeah, it's it's, it's been really interesting so far. Um, it has been it has been a I'd say in the first nine chapters of watching uh, Count, you know, it's been it's been really interesting. Um, we started off at this really deep place, you know. We've we two. I'm not sure if you actually read the story yourself or keeping up with it yeah yeah i mean I, I i did read the story one year ago but also i'm keeping up with it yeah good to make sure um that's well as the um, we start off, yeah we start off, uh, deep you know we we're we're young we're a young college student with our younger stepbrother we come home to find well come to a hotel room to find both parents viciously slaughtered by unknown means but only to, with the only evidence of a mysterious symbol that the uh, that their mother had actually drawn before her death, and you know it's it was a traumatic experience, um, only to yeah. that would affect them really bad, and then uh, only to fast forward a few weeks to moving with a grandfather they'd never even met, which on their mother's side, um, who uh, who took them in, but he he was he didn't seem too thrilled about it. He didn't seem like he really cared much. Like he just got thrown on this. He didn't really care as much. Um, he got thrown, so then he he brought them back. You know, he gave them a roof, uh, expected them to follow the rules, etc. And it got got interesting. You know, we uh, we met some uh, familiar faces actually. I believe we met uh, good old Tom from the first story, quite early on, who worked for his yeah. grandfather. So it was it was quite refreshing to see him again. You know, nice to see him. We uh, she took I can't remember if she took the uh, yeah she took the tall with him as well. It was interesting to see. You know him just back around, you know, making, making, making headways after his events of Westchester, which he we brought back up a couple of times. You know, yeah. and, then, and his friend. Yeah. yeah and next, next thing you know, you're coming up to this, uh, this yacht, and you meet this, this nice lady, Imog, Imogen, I think it's pronounced. I can't remember off the top of my head. And, you know, she's uh she's one of the love interests as well. She's she's quite cute. She's very passionate. Very nice. I'm. I, I really like her. And you know, you uh, you want to, you understand that you've got to quickly fix the boat up for a little uh, a little pie that's going on. Just getting uh, you want to get yourself into the pie mood. You want to kind of move on a bit from what's happened. You end up going clothes shopping. Find a nice dress. Find a really nice uh, outfit, which I believe was really cringely called Yatzi, which I remember and. Uh, uh, it left me laughing, but also left me with a pain of cringe. Um, you know, we we get to this party, we start having some fun. We meet uh, uh, a character she's been talking about, her best friend Kyle, who um, you know, who's he's this interesting person who uh, who comes by after after the Truth or Dare game they played, uh, Catch or Dare, in which uh, Emoji oh, I can't pronounce her name. I feel bad. She took a selfie saying, you know, it was supposed to be a dare saying, you have to hang out with me or something. Like, just a little cute little dare. But then um, someone spilt some wine and it brought back flashbacks of being back in the hotel room. He felt overwhelmed. He went to get some air and that's when he met Kyle, you know. And then uh, he gets to know Kyle a bit. It's just, it's an interesting young man. He's a nice guy. But then next thing you know, you've got a police officer on the boat talking about a curfew that was supposed to be, impl- well, that was supposed to be a... Uh, well, not really supposed to be, well, it was more or less wanted by the uh, parents for unknown reasons. The, the So far, the the entire place of uh, West, West, was it West Pine? Pine Grounds? I, I genuinely can't remember already. Uh, Pine Springs, I think. Pine Springs, that's it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been known for being mysterious so far, and the next thing you know, you just, you, you see a, a bit of mist rolling, and next thing we know, we've got Kyle standing on the bow, 
who literally on the edge is just he's he, but he doesn't even look drunk or anything. He, he literally looks, and you can see he's practically possessed. You know, he's got blue in his eyes. You know, the main main character tries to get him, tries to get him, but he topples over. But then, of course, the main character is able to jump in, dive after him, and that is when you see the first CG of the game, which is the um, well, <sighs> the CG of the main of the uh, antagonist. It's this skeletal creature. A bit similar to the one from the first story, but a bit more physical than Shadow, with the blue eyes just forcibly dragging him down. And it's uh, yeah, quite that was, a yeah. haunting uh, experience for the main character, you know? It's, it's started off, it was really interesting start, but it was very rough. You know, um, then we, uh, we advance to the story, you get to know all these, sec- another character of the group, the love interest, which is the cop, Parker. Um, we also meet the I can't believe if he's a well, he's basically so far you sign him off as a conspiracy theorist, Ned, who talks about his wife's passing of how she died, which I believe was actually the teaser from the first game when it finished off. I believe it was that ending of the lady that that mysteriously died or vanished um in that teaser. I believe that was the wife he was talking about. You know, he's he's mad, he's saying this is happening again. And he wants to do something about it, but everyone's just acting off like it's normal, trying to uncover something. And that's when you know things start getting interesting. You know, you you understand more stuff about the story. Uh, you you meet more people. You you want to you want to get answers, and you figure you know cops aren't going to help you. What better way than to go for the person who actually knows something? You go talk to Ned. But that is when the most interesting thing happens. Of course, you know you you get this man, but then suddenly you've got. <laughs> The yeah. um, you've got the robe characters coming, an unknown group of people coming into the house, and next thing you know, Neb's assaulted, what you believe is is killed, and then the mm-hmm. symbol on the robe is what really gets everybody because it's the same symbol he saw on his mother's death mm-hmm. and his parents' death, so he immediately assumes it's them, and the next thing he knows, he's got to uh, he's got to escape, and uh, poor cat, I think she perished quite a few times <laughs> trying to escape. I think yeah, it took definitely took her a good few tries. Uh, you know, he, he tries to escape, gets to the top floor in a bedroom, but of course his position's given away. He's able to fight back by hitting one of them, but then it's just a complete blackout. And then next thing he knows, he's back at home, mysteriously. And of course, he, his brother, Elliot, thinks it's a bit of a dream, but of course he believes it's not. You know, he goes to the police station to, to report the murder to Parker, and then shockingly ned walks out of the office just in time just you know all dandy and perfect and it's like what just happened and like everything's blanked out you know you, you're completely confused you know you just saw someone's murder but also as convenient is as well before the night you meet this other character who turns out to be another character and love interest uh danny i think it is you know she's really interesting yeah she's yeah. Not so much a conspiracy theorist, but uh, she knows what's going on. She knows something's wrong and she wants to do something about it. She's very mysterious and she even has evidence to corroborate. I really like her. She's got a lot of passion and a lot of strength. And then you also you also find out that uh, Ned's house is conveniently up for sale one day after he was supposedly murdered. And it's like... I've forgotten her name again. In- 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 Jimmy? I really can't say it. Her mother... Imogen- Imogy, that's it. Her mother, Astrid, who is um, I can't she's like a real, she's a real estate agent, I believe. So yeah, she's uh selling off the house um, right after you know he just said he wants to suddenly leave and move the town. Mm-hmm. Very mysterious, you know. He just granted, he just died, but he was just conspiracy theorist a minute ago. How can you go from conspiracy theorist to wanting to leave and being so naive about the whole thing? And then she tells them to go everywhere apart from the basement. They go down to the basement to find a vial of red liquid, which is uh, believed to be blood, as well as an unknown skeleton key, which is uh, quite interesting to see. You know, and then they uh, they finally leave. Still confused, there's just all the hell, but they realize they need to find some answers for something. And that's when, uh, then, they, then he goes to meet uh, Danny once again. He bumps into her, and... Uh, tries to get some more information, which he in fact does plenty on her lunch break. He finds out of the information that's going on. You know, he finds this creature. Um, he, um, 
he sees the same creature that took Kyle, and he has evidence. Well, she has evidence to show that you know it's the same, same images, the same, similar scenarios, dating back over twenty years in the same place. And then next thing you know, you're uh, you realize you know you have to go go after it. You know, um, he gets a group of people. He gets a group of people. He gets uh, Danny, um, and Parker. I believe it is. And he goes into the woods trying to investigate a dock, which they also revealed in, I think it was Danny I'm not too sure, uh, of a cult, well, that what they believed is a cult, of the same people who attacked the main character, you know, into the woods, when in fact they're attacked with uh, one of the monsters, the first monsters yeah. you see, which is vaguely similar to the one that it lays, but it's more, less skeletal. This one's more more morphed animal. It's like half lion. It's like two lion heads and a snake, I believe. Yeah. Okay. They did a really good job with that. Um, instead of the orange eyes, they're blue eyes, which was a nice touch as well. Um, and then, you know, they try to fight back, but it's got nothing. And then out of nowhere, we've got Wizard Kid Tom coming in and absolutely smashing it. A gun does nothing, but apparently a bat does everything. Uh, and that's when, of course, Tom reveals his ultimate of, you know, his backstory of who we know who he is. He's from Westchester. He went through this experience, and he's here trying to deal with it. You know, it's nice to see that he's actually here to deal with this. You know, he's, he's continuing on to help everybody to do the right thing. You know, and then uh, next thing you know, you just ultimately confused. You know, you've got uh, Parker, and then uh, Parker, Danny, and Tom. You know, you've got this. You've got this strong group, but still, you're ultimately confused on what to do. You know, and uh, then next thing you know, you're uh, you're trying to figure out who this cult could be, and then uh, it, it comes down to well, what you think is three suspects. It's uh, uh, an aggressive man who uh, had a run-in with uh, Pat, I believe. There was the lady who was an assistant, um, assistant assistant district attorney. And then there was a man named Richard Seville. I think it's Seville. Yeah. Who was this rich, well, well, to Danny, she was a rich creep, always prying on her. Yeah. Her out, being yeah. really chatty. And that's when uh, he kind of sticks out the most, especially when you start talking to him. You figure out that um, he actually has the mark from when you fought back, and that's the same mark. One thing as well is you find out he has a son who has been uh, getting to know your younger brother, Robbie, um, Elliot and Robbie, and uh, he actually, um, he instantly dismisses you, you know, he, he doesn't like the idea of his son with, with your brother, and it's like, yeah. personally, I didn't get it, you know, it's just, what's so bad, you know, it's just two kids having fun, I mean, of course, there are maybe some ulterior motives, but two kids having fun, there's nothing wrong with that, and of course, they have the idea to want to stick into some of his mansions, because they think there may be something secret going on, so in fact, they do, in fact, get ready to go to the mansion after some serious strings being pulled. Um, my cat going there, rocking a big blue suit, trying to rock all the outfits. And uh, one thing she's been collecting as well were the messages in the bottles, which have been... They were like the ones from before, but I haven't been able to get my head around them, really. They've been really interesting. I'm trying to figure them yeah. out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I believe it's still referencing to what happened before with somebody else. But I, with, yeah. with how this one went, I doubt they survived it. And then uh, we get to the mansion, you know, starts off simple, start having a bit of a, you know, having some drinks, some food, getting to know one of the characters, okay. yeah. that's when it starts to get a little suspicious, we notice that, um, we start looking around, and that's when we actually find the, uh, we find Richard going down to his wine cellar, but that's when it starts to get really weird, you know, we find, uh, he just disappeared out of nowhere, but that's when, you know, mine comes to the fact, the fact comes to the mind, secret passageway somewhere. But the keypad, which they actually find in the wine cellar, isn't just the standard keypad. It's something ancient and ruined. It's something... I will say they did something unique with that. You know, it's not just a typical secret keypad, secret cave. It's actually unique. They've changed how it is. You know, you find the secret cave. You have a look around. There's some interesting rooms for a surprisingly secret basement. And that's when, you know, it all comes down. You see a table of the cult itself, who turns out... To be none other than the main characters you've met so far. You know, you see them all mask themselves one by one. We've got Astrid and Vincent, um, Ingevini's parents. We've got uh, Richard. We've got yeah. the sheriff. And we've also got your grandfather. Which yeah. is a 
huge climax as well. And then next thing yeah. you know, you're uh, you're compromised. You've got to bug out. You know, all you, all of you have just seen your friends and people you know as these this this this, this cult that doesn't even seem well. So the next thing you know, you're trying to fight your way out. Mm-hmm. And it, it does not go well until you manage to uh, hide. You you can have to choose who you hide with. I believe Cat hid with Parker. Parker, she, yeah. Yeah, she's aiming to be his ally for now, which is a good choice. You know, you've got a strong cop, strong fire. Um, yeah. They, you're able to make it out to the pool only to find Richard, who's uh, ready and waiting for you. But that's when it starts to get you because Richard mentions your mother's death because he one thing knew is that symbol had to be related to it. And that's when uh, his grandfather actually helps him. But of course, he's not atoned to the idea at all. He uh, makes a run for the... He makes a run back for his place to get his brother and escape to back, I believe it was to the same lake where the creature was. Uh, yeah. The were. And that's when the cl- that's when the second, in my opinion, the second biggest climax hits. You know, you've got you've got the actual creature itself. You know, you, you, you see the cult coming behind you. You've got the numerous creatures and you even see the main antagonist skeletal creature coming out when it whisper it's even whispering, you know, saying to kill them all. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's Creepy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, and then next thing you know, you're you're doubling back. You, you don't know what to do. You 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 manage to uh, get your way back to the mansion, and that's when things start to uh, die down and open up a bit. You find out uh, you find out that this isn't at all what it kind of seems. You find out that the cult are actually kind of a good cult. So shockingly, they're actually a good society of people who have been trying to deal with this outcome. And they've been trying to deal with the creatures itself, and that's. But there's still one thing that doesn't fact that doesn't sit well with the character, and that's the fact of what Richard said, and that's when things start to unravel a lot. There was a cult inside the cult, because they were getting greedy, and desperate, and they even talked about it. But that's when the main character exposed Richard, who because he knew he hurt him, and he knew the the snide remark he made about his mother, because he, he exposed him. And then not only that, but Richard exposes the two people who were helping him. Which, in fact, were Astrid's main bodyguard and their own grandfather itself. And that's when it starts to get really deep. You find out, you know, that uh, they start to fight back. But it finds out that uh, the grandfather's not only been lying about the cult, he's been lying to the cult itself. He's been lying to everybody. Turns out that uh, Rich, it was Rich, I think, Um, Richard helped them. But the grandfather was actually the one to kill their parents. He murdered his own daughter. Because they were going to expose them, you know? It's like, I don't know how deep you can get. You find out this grandfather you've never met kills his own daughter to hide a power because he's greedy. And next thing you know, um, it's it just gets rough there, you know? Things are not looking good for you and your uh, your, stepbrother, your stepbrother, you know? you Your only guardian's gone, so, uh, and Cat, you have to make a choice. Cat actually made the choice for him to be mansplained or something. Where uh, you know he's considered an adult, makes his own choices, which I guess yeah. is a good choice because yeah, while sure. his brother has no overall power, he can still advise him and still make help him make good choices. And that's when you know he uh, starts to talk about how we're gonna be able to try and fight back as well as uh, deal with all this this issue, especially when uh, Richard's kid sees him being arrested and they tell him the truth. That's not that's not gonna go well. And then next thing we know, Imog- Imogen's going to actually be the next in line to join this cult. You know, she yeah. she's to uh, t- accept the power and help, which in fact she does. And that's, I think that's where we left off, actually, where she ended up um, gaining her power and, you know, being ready to, everyone's ready to fight as well, you know. And it was, one thing as well I liked that I actually missed out as well, if we go back a few chapters, was after Tom was discovered, we had the throwback. We had the comeback to Winchester. And we saw yeah, the entire exactly. OG gang. Yeah, no one. Stacy. Yeah. We saw, you know, we got the information from them, and then we even ran into main character on main character. We found Cat, who, who actually, one thing that I was surprised at, went back to Nola, who was still, you know, he's still them, and she was trying to help him. You know, she was trying to make yeah. him understand that not to be like what was before. You know, she's been speaking out to help him, and uh, she wants to be able to convince the others as well, but they won't be as easily forgiving after what he did, which is understandable. So, 
I think it's kind of nice we had a little main character or main character crossover. It was really interesting to see. Yeah. That was and, uh, I guess it was a good idea that uh, Kat decided to change the character in the name. Would have been weird saying, hi, Kat, hi, Kat. <laughs> um, yeah. That would have been rather funny, but um, overall, I think we've hit a good point in the story. For the first nine chapters, it's been an amazing thrill. I am really excited to see what comes next, especially considering yes. that you know we'll hopefully have the main character and their group teaming up with the uh, with the uh, remaining remaining uh, people from the village and the uh, towns to help yeah. fight this thing. And one thing they wanted, one thing the the going to cat made them realize is that this it may be a similar entity. That's uh, that's inside it. Maybe this is the same. What if, as well? What if, in fact, because Deirdre, the the yeah. wife of Ned, was taken, which was the woman from the teaser, which I still believe. What if that's in fact the creature? Hmm? Hmm. So like I said, there's a lot of theories going on. I mean, it's only chapter yeah. nine that she's on. Yeah. There's, there's so much she's, story. Yeah, I'm seven really more chapters excited. to go. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, um, yeah, it's it's this, this book is completely a roller coaster. It's just like the Veil of Seekers. When you think you've got this figured out, you say no, this is. Then you go to that one, you say no, that one. Then you go to that one, you go to that one. So it is really hard to understand like who is lying, who is saying the truth, who killed who, who did what. I mean, it's just. Uh, you know, like, it's, I don't know, like, it's those kind of, like, you open a box, and you find another box, you open that box, you find another box, you keep opening boxes until you find the last box, so yeah, we just, you know, three or four boxes in, so you gotta keep a lot of boxes still, and, um, yeah, you're right, uh, one thing I'd like to mention, though, it's, it's a super interesting book, uh, first thing, why I think so, is that, First thing is that um, the 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 inclusion of uh, like you said the original gang for um uh, the book one that was really awesome they didn't forget them uh, so the way they were included and the way they mentioned and Noah and uh, Damien I think uh, the MC from the first chapter first book and the way they were mentioned and it was really awesome and also I think MC and Li they had more time in this book compared to the last book it lives in the woods and i think that was really super awesome that's some people really wanted because you know you're fighting uh the you know ghosts and stuff so if you have time with your ally more time more intimate scenes and you know the mental bond that this should that should be there that i felt like that was not present in it lives in the woods kind of so it lives beneath really did an amazing job did an amazing job with that and with the nerve score and stuff, it's also super awesome. The scenes we get super awesome. In terms of mystery, I mean, it's really hard. Like I said, it's opening boxes. I don't know where you stop. And those letters we keep getting, when I first re read the letter, it's a, it, it states, it, it goes back one or two centuries. And I felt super awesome because, you know, it felt like someone was describing the first time they were there. And it feels like something bad happened to them. Because, you know, people keep coming back, disturbing the, that person, you know, to sell the property and stuff. So I think reading the letters, it feels super awesome. And I think they included this. We had the same thing kind of in book one, two. Uh, uh, in the, it lives in the uh, woods where we read letters that a crow used to bring. But in this thing, I think it was more, uh, you know, um, I don't know, more attractive, I think. Because the way we used to read one letter... All right, so then we find another bottled letter. And it connects something up and something, you know, ancient, something old, something really what happened. So I don't know. I, I just felt super, um, you know, excited about that. Just, you know, reading about what happened in the past, you know, the way it was described. Also, like, you know, calming just, uh, you know, lakeside area, just uh, some supernatural power. Something lives in the lake. And then... You know, whenever we used to go to the lake when something's not happening, just the calmness, you know, you can tell the music, the background music, you know, whenever you're on the lake, you know, just mm, it's just, it's just the music, you know, it's just uh, it tells you like there's something more, something more than meets the eye. There's a peculiar calmness. This is just a calmness that shouldn't be there. And it's just, uh, you know, horrifying thoughts. The creature comes up, you know, the twist turns, you know, uh, basically finding out, discovering the cult is finding your grandpa there and ned i mean this is it's really hard to wrap your head around this book and it's super awesome and um if you are playing this book i don't know uh you know you, you this is the three hours waiting for a key 
uh, it, it, you can't wait for this because I personally, um, yeah, it's super awesome so far till chapter nine. And from every perspective, it's really hard to talk about it because, you know, it's really, I, I can't figure out like where to start, where to finish. So kudos to you. Like you represent it uh, really well, those storylines so far, what happened till chapter nine, because I, I found it overwhelmed and I sometimes feel like I'm uh, running out of words because it's just so many things happening and it's just overwhelming, you know. It's a, a one of the one of the best books, and you know it lives in it lives in it. I just absolutely li- like it. You know, it has it lives in the woods part in it, and also something more. I love that absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I I can understand the point of uh, being hard to come around. You know, you've got all these different points going left, right, up, down. You know, you can't get the can't make heads or tails of what's right, what's wrong until you get it all, and then you're not wanting to wait. You, you definitely do not want to wait because imagine just doing a few days at each time. You know, you got to wait a day you might, whilst you got to, maybe you've got to go to school, maybe you've got to go to work. You'll you'll forget what's going on. You'll kind of lose plot of the story. So yeah, that's yeah. gonna be a rough one. But uh, yeah, it, it is a really great book. You know, the, a perfect crossover between you know the main. One thing I would have I would have thought I wanted to see was like say for instance you had the LI I was expecting the main character to be there as well you know maybe showing off their relationship see if it was exactly. still going on for the LI but, exactly. uh, but you know it's, it's still possible I guess um mm-hmm. and then yeah. Uh, yeah in terms of wrapping the story I had to go through it a good few times you know go for all the facts um make sure I had everything you know leveled out you know the symbol uh the cult you know yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, it got a bit tense, you know, especially when we figured out who the cult was, but we didn't realize their motives until they told us until we well, don't much choice. You know, and then we kind of get our head around everything. It was, it was, it, it can be uh, quite interesting, but as long as, say, for instance, you've got someone to uh, maybe help explain it to you while you go through it enough times, make enough notes, you should be able to get your head around it and yeah. understand it a bit more. But uh, hmm. it is an amazing story, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest no of it. Doubt. Yeah. Uh, well, did you uh, hear that part, you know, uh, where Kat um, uh, reads the dialogues of the grandpa? I mean, that was hilarious. I mean, uh, he, you know, she was literally sounding like a, a grandpa. And it was like a best grandpa impression I have uh, uh, ever heard anyone doing. That was that was really awesome. You know? Yeah, that was uh, that was really hilarious. I couldn't I couldn't tell if she was trying to do like a horse voice or if she wanted to be constipated. I couldn't tell. It was it was it was amazing though, and I yeah. and apart from the one dialogue we've got from the creature saying you know kill them all of the main antagonist, I we've yet to see what her voice will be. Will it be the same as yeah. Redfield, or will she do something a bit more? Uh, who knows? Maybe she, she might have a bit of a gurgling, she might add yeah. like a little water effect. Uh, no, but she does yeah. a an amazing voice, and she also had a partner, I believe, for the one of the chapters. I think it was uh might have been Cupcake. Or somebody who was voicing, who did the little voice of Injimi and um, Astrid, who was also did an amazing job. You know, you she get a, she got a couple of people with her. They all do an amazing job of the voices, and yeah. her playthrough is just so full of life. Especially the fact that she has such an interactive community. Hell, she even has Pixelberry themselves in in the actual chat, interacting with people. I've interacted with them a couple of times. It's she does an amazing job, as well as uh, Tasha Monet. You know, we've got two amazing people. You know, it's like can we see the choices being you lovely revived? You know, we've got Pixel, but who knows? Maybe, maybe Cat could even convince Pixel Bear to do a couple of things. You know, but so yeah, it's it's just such a lively community. It's just it just reminds me of one of the things why I got into choices and why yeah. I chose to interact with the community. Yeah. It's just yeah. it makes me just makes me stick by my choice. So yeah. thank you, Cat, and thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks. I mean, also this is really rare, like uh, a, a app like an app like Pixel, where really, they're you know like communicating with people, you know, like you said in the chat. They, they, you don't see this in uh, you know every fandom or every show or every you know app. It's just something really rare, you know. Like it's it's like down to earth, really. Yeah, it just it just makes it feel more more real, you know. And yeah, you rarely Closer. even see streams like this. Yeah, yeah. definitely, you rarely even see streams of choices. I mean, you rarely see streams of anything. I mean, one thing as well, uh, I tried to, because one other game I've been playing is like Love Struck. I've not found a single playthrough on YouTube. No one's done a playthrough of that. And that has a really deep story in, in some of them. It's like, you know, it's like we need to, 
hopefully we have the, some amazing people to be able to go through these stories, you know? There's just there's so much to it. And but we are lucky to have Kat and Tasha and all the others doing uh, choices. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get more in the future. But of course, we'll have to remember the OGs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The OGs. Um, but yeah, I mean, awesome community and awesome place, you know. It just lifts up your mood, you know. Like, it, really, it just, you know. Yeah, it, the, the only, um, sorry, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I finished, I finished, go on. Um, the only thing I regret is not coming to this community earlier, going because, uh, yeah, with the COVID and high school, uh, it, it was very dark. I, I did, I had nowhere to like lift my own spirit. Yeah. It was sad. I, I really wish I found the community a lot sooner. Yeah. Through, you know, meet all these amazing people. And, but I mean, at least I'm here now. That's what counts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, take, it, take it from me, you know, there's, there's no regret, you know. Yeah, there's no time like uh, sooner, there's no time like now. But even if you have come late, but you have come here. So, because I know I have discovered a show last year and, uh, I, it was originally ended. Uh, it it, uh, it was originally, you know, released in 2012 and ended in 2016. So I discovered it almost four years later, and I also thought, oh, why didn't I discover it four years ago? I could have had a different life if I had discovered it. You know, you know I could have had a lot of, um, you know, you know, just uh, I could have had the feeling I'm having now four years ago if I had discovered it then. And, it could have been, but yeah, it's just, you know, time, you know, uh, if you, when you have it, you just, you, you're not going to let it go. You just, just cling on to it tightly. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely like my, uh, my passion and uh, especially with the, everything that goes on, you know, I'm like, one thing I will be saying about is like, I'm, I, I do stream, I play, I play my uh, game Rainbow Six, but as of past events, you know, the game does have a bit of a toxic community. And uh, I try to, you know, try to steer away from the like the uh, toxicity yeah. of it. And it, it, but it does, it is quite can be overwhelming. There has been a lot of it, especially due to, um, in fact, a recent event. So it is nice to kind of escape that and everything, and just be able to come here to be myself, mm -hmm. interact with all of you, and just free yeah. choices. You know, make just yeah. to yeah. live a better yeah. life and have have actual fun. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. And I would really love for you to. Uh, you know, come up with something like, you know, a stream on your Twitch or, um, you know, like with uh, a very scandalous proposal and um, uh, the unexpected errors when it releases because uh, these British accents, I would really like you to do those and um, it would be super awesome, you know, because like I said, I really do want to have one of those British accents because I don't think we have much uh, in British accents, to be honest, like specifically these British books. Yeah, yeah, I, I would love to, and uh, hey, who knows? Maybe we could get cat. Maybe we could get cat to go through a very scandalous proposal. Unexpected, Anna. I think that would go very well. That yeah, would... maybe she can go. She can go. Uh, she can go through the dialogues of the American reporter, and you can go through maybe you know Ava or someone. It would, it would be super awesome, you know, because I always, uh, uh, you know, uh, whenever I read one love interest, because I remember uh, Passport to Romance, there was Elliot, a British love interest. But I, I was just, I was unable to get his voice uh, British. So it'd be really awesome, you know, uh, that that was a boss. Yeah, well, uh, I'll have to run it by her, you know. Nice. That'd be, I think it'd be actually fun, you know, doing a nice little collab with Kat, going through choices, trying to do a British accent of myself, as well as female. I mean, there's all sorts of kind of work yeah. to go through, but I could, uh, I could probably give it a try. Yeah, I'll have to, uh, I'll run it by her. Or maybe she'll even hear it in the podcast. Let me know what you think, Kat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, not only just any British accent, but, you know, raw British accent. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh, good God. Yeah, I have, to, uh, I have to work on that one for definite if I'm going to do Royal. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be super awesome. Like, uh, in general, the story is super awesome, like you said. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, both. I mean, we talked about Slow Burn. We talked about Laws of a Trash. We talked about a very scandalous proposal. Don, I just talked about uh, so forgetting the book, uh, it lives beneath. You know, it's a great book. So all the books are really quality books. You know, and it kind of gets you hooked up to the chap, uh, to the storyline, and yeah, it's just productive books. Yeah, well, uh, I'm happy to go through these books, and I think after I've finished these ones as well, I'll have to go back and hit some uh, hidden treasures, 
might go back through Witness. I'll have to go through Queen B, Distant mm-hmm. Shores, Baby Bomb. I want to go through Bloodborne. Bloodborne has been, I've been told is really good. Well. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, if you haven't read Veil of Secrets yet, I would suggest you personally that go ahead and read Veil of Secrets because it's it's. I mean, if you like it lives in it, I don't see why you're not gonna like Veil of Secrets because um, a, a minus the you know element of fear, like adventure, mystery, you know the box after box, you won't know who the killer is until the end. Uh, that's uh, like everything you, you can find in that book. So. It's a blast. Yeah, I've got a lot of books to go through, but uh, I can't wait to go through them, get a nice deep analysis. It's definitely going to be hard once I get to Blood Bomb. That I'm pretty sure that's three books. <laughs> yeah, and two side books. And two side books, right. Well, uh, I'll be ready for it. And I'll, I can't wait to go through them. And yeah, best of that. Have fun. You know, it's, it's a, more importantly, I, I have seen when I, I used to do that, you know, even... Still 2019, I think I finished almost uh, the main books reading. So uh, you know, I, I saw that and it, sometimes it seems, okay, I got to finish this now. But also you get really hooked up to the books and uh, you get a lot of fun from reading those. So yeah, so uh, best of luck for with those fun. Enjoy them. Yeah, and uh, who knows, maybe I could even give some reviews on them as well. Yeah, definitely. It would be super awesome because a lot of books uh, I personally haven't read. So if, if you know, read some, then I got to read it too, or maybe I read it before. So definitely like to talk about it and we'll see you discuss it. It would be super awesome. Well, whilst I'm reading all these, you'll have to make sure to read Witness as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll go through that. You know, it's a big book, but yeah, definitely would. Eh, it's not as big as the ones I have to read. I've got a lot. You, you've got the easy one. <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, I, I heard that witness is like the chapter ends are short, so I didn't see why it would be a problem. Yeah, it's uh, remotely short, say about a good seven, eight minutes per chapter. Yeah. So it's, 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 I do like yeah. the story. It is really deep between the character and the ally. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. I just wish it was a gender customizable MC, so that would have been super awesome. Yeah. I think I think they're coming mainly into gender customizable nowadays, aren't they? Which is which is still good, but uh, yeah. No, I, I I do like some gender lock ones. That some of them do make sense, but still, it's better to keep it open. Yeah, like Baby Bump or Mother of the Year, they make sense if they're going with gender lock. But uh, you know, some other books, they could just go with gender customizable, and that would that would have uh, more possibilities open. You know, it's just always uh, because they have a. A versatile community, uh, you know, a very diverse community. So yeah, uh, even like including a third, you know, lots of genders, not just male and female. Like what they did with Farn Affairs, that would be cross. Yeah, like I said, we still got plenty of opportunities, plenty of possibilities, and it, yeah. with the way choices is going so far, yeah, this we've, we've got yeah. Kat, Asha promoting it on streams. We've got choices promoting them, and you know, it's yeah. just, it it seems to be going up so far, and I'm I'm really excited for the future again. It's... Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's it's super awesome. Just you know, choices. Um, uh, like like it, it's just so many amazing people everywhere. You know, I uh, they just express their uh, thoughts freely, and uh, you know the way they represent. I, I remember uh, that like uh, very nice people. Like you know, like I really like this guy Kyle, and very nice guy and like him. Like um, really. So yeah, it's, it's a great community. The people around them are also. Very nice, yeah. yeah, I've I've met uh, two communities so far. I've met one on the first one on Twitter, a nice group of people that I've met from Choices, um, Amber, uh, Eric, Jerry, and a couple others. And then from the uh, Instagram, I've met, I've joined the uh, Insta fandom. There's some really nice people. Yeah, there's loads of people. Fine. Yeah, Hey Baby Five. There's the admin. There's a uh, Sandra. There's all sorts of people. Honest to God, yeah, it's just amazing to see so many people. That you can, you can totally make with friends, you know, and all have something in common and be yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's that's, that's the part of this community. And even if you don't just talk with anyone, if you just scroll through the Instagram, you watch the edits and stuff, it would just make your day. The edits are absolutely amazing. Like I've been talking with some of the people in the group chat. They make some amazing edits. It's uh, it's yeah. it's genuinely remarkable to see. I'm keep thinking, Pixabay should pick a couple of these up if they want to uh, expand. 
yeah. the wardrobe a bit more on their stories. Yeah, but... yeah, exactly, the wardrobe, yeah. Because I have seen, I, I had this conversation with someone, uh, I think it was uh, the Adiba or someone, like they said, uh, the, we, they always give MC the option to change clothes. But uh, really surprisingly, the, the love interest, they don't change clothes like forever. The cloth they are wearing in the first chapter, they're wearing that in the last chapter. Even if it's a special occasion, very, very seldom times they change the cloth. You know, like if, if it's a prom, they change the cloth. But other than that, uh, normal occasions also, they don't change the cloth, but MC has to. So yeah, that, they should look into that, you know, because allies or other characters, they should also change cloths. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense. I mean, yeah, there's there's a good couple outfits and some stories. Like, uh, truthfully, I believe, uh, what story was it? Uh, the Nanny Affair. I would have liked to see, like, being able to change up Sam's outfit a bit. You know, she's yeah, yeah, she's this typical outfit. But I would have liked to see the gala dress one again, like, because that was a really nice design. You know, yeah, the, glitter, yeah. the main character's golden one. That was a really nice one. And then the wedding dress. You know, I mean, it was yeah. it was for a wedding, but still, there mm. there were some really nice designs in there. And it's just, it would make more sense if you could customize them after at least one playthrough. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, so that would be totally a blast. Uh, so we are almost done, I guess. So do you have anything else to add to it? Because I think my list is almost done. Yeah, I was uh, leaving out It Lives Bene. Thank you for reminding me that actually I had written just a recent book. So I just totally... Uh, re I I wrote off the it lives spinning, so thanks for that reminding me. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, I think that's everything for today. Well, at least off the top of my head, I won't be able to yeah. forget. I won't be able to remember anything else right now. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. So so that's it. I, and I hope I didn't take up uh, much of your time of your, from your Monday. No, no, it's an absolute pleasure. I, honest to God, it it gives me something to do. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be putting my time toward the you know the choices fandom and yeah. you know put, you know putting my time to some to, to people and something something good something better than what i'm yeah. usually doing yeah exactly i mean i i really like it uh, um to talk with you also or you know talk with people also even like talking about that uh, you, you share your experience you listen to it and also you uh, express yourself i think that's what we need you know listen to others and then um you know express your thoughts you know that's all we need just not in choices but also in general life you know, listen and then express yourself it's just uh it's a nice thing and um really like it thanks for uh coming here and it's it's really awesome because like i said when i started um you know this i didn't ever hope that i would be having this kind of like, really productive meaningful conversations with people you know because it is super awesome and uh it's just uh, something I, when I first started in, back in November 2020, I never expected this to ever happen and uh, to get to this point, like uh, having the conversation. Because it is worth it, you know, like these conversations. And, uh, and if people listen to this conversation, you know, they also, uh, they're able to relate their um, craze for choices from these conversations. And overall, just the conversation, it's just, it's just you know, worth it. The, the passion that this... Uh, um, reflects off of uh, the other person and also you reflect it about choices it's just something worth uh, living for yeah like i said i i think i speak for most of the fandom who already know and some of them who don't know that you you do really do an amazing job on this podcast you know you are the top two podcasts you and then the play choices honestly you, yeah, you guys do yeah. an amazing job you're out of your way, you're, you're making these videos, you're getting yeah. people's opinions, you're giving up your own time to make these, and you, yeah. I mean, you guys should really be big, and I think you guys are really going to go big in terms Thanks. of the choice yeah. of fandom as well, and you'll be, like, you, you're you both, you're both fairly at a good size right now to say you've been doing this for a while, and yeah. I think you're just going to keep growing and just keep doing an amazing job. It's, yeah. it's really refreshing yeah. to see, though. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, Play Choices podcast. Yeah, they've been uh, here for a long time. I think even longer than uh, I've been here. Like they've been here. They, they started their first episode in 2019, and they kind of uh, I think for some reason they stopped making episodes, and they again picked it up from last year December or something. I guess. Yeah. And um, personally, for me, I started November, and uh, the big part. I think I have a video about that. It was about, I don't know if you know him, like Kyle Davis, who used to host the Choices Talk Show. 
and I was a big fan of him. I mean, I used to watch all the episodes for him. And then, um, you know, like I have this uh, habit, like I used to do wow, because I admired his work and I always wanted to do something. Then for some personal reasons, he quitted. Then I kind of uh, wanted to uh, send the message to everyone because he had a big uh, fan following. What he used to do is reviews and stuff. And that, those are really popular. So I really wanted to you know, carry on Kyle's legacy and what he did. I always dreamt of doing that. I mean, when he was in here, even I tried to uh, do something. Because, you know, like you go to school, you watch your teachers teach you, then you come back home and then you try to imagine, oh, wow, you're a teacher too. And you're teaching even dogs or something as a kid. So that was like that for me with Kyle. And I think there was another one with the, the Simp Show and Apple Podcast. I mean, they were the OGs, I think, a uh, uh, long time ago. So, yeah, so that, that really inspired me and I but started this. But I never hoped that I would be having conversations with people like you, Kat, or Charles' Lady. And that's super awesome. And it's just, um, you know, it, it just gives you a hope. Like, well, you express your feeling about, like, you have someone to talk about what do you love. You know, it's just, it's just super awesome. You know? Grateful for these moments. Well, then I think I could say keep your head up because you're just going to keep going high. You you do an amazing job, and I think I personally think he'd be proud of what you did and what you keep doing. And hope hope you never know he may actually stop by and be able to see to see this. You know that to see that he inspired someone to continue what he was what he loved and continue what everyone loved and continue to, to keep you know join choices around. You know, you, along with you and then uh, V and Lucas over on the Play Choices podcast. You know, just yeah. the entire community coming together. It's it's remarkable and you know you guys just do an amazing joyce amazing joyce amazing job so i'd say thank you to both of you for you know giving us this experience and yeah, yeah keep us keep the choices fandom alive and yeah, yeah. heal out to the people who still love choices and still want to be here yeah i think you know it's mainly because of uh you know uh, thanks to uh, people like you like who come here and listen and even more than listen communicate i mean uh, this is the best way that i uh, you're talking with uh, me and uh, the other ones that are here uh, on Apple Podcast, um, uh, Simp Show, who has been also making show videos, uh, sorry, audios, not videos. Really. Um, so, yeah, but, like these conversations also. And sometimes it's uh, not possible to have everyone here, but in the comment section, also to have the conversations and the long conversations with people. So, yeah, it's just, it's just about the conversations, you know. So, yeah, it's just, it's just an awesome experience. And, um, you know, it's just I'm thankful for these, you know, these are just, uh, they just lift my mood up also, you know, like my spirit up, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, and it's, like I said, thanks for, you know, bringing this to us. And, you know, it's just, all I see is keep your head up. You're going to keep going yeah. high, both both you and, yeah. and them. You know, you're going to keep doing amazing. You're yeah. gonna keep, hopefully we can keep getting you guys big. And who knows, maybe even play choices can... Uh, well, and Pixelberry themselves can acknowledge the, the good work that you guys do, along with uh, Kat and Tasha. You know, they promote the game. You guys promote it in the review section, you know. Just got to wait yeah. till they come by and acknowledge what you guys do all together. Yeah, that would be, be super awesome, yeah. I mean, that would be worth it. But still, I mean, uh, what we have at the moment, like, the, getting the acknowledgement from uh, you guys and have the conversation with you guys, that's almost a part of it, you know. So, yeah, thanks for that again, and... Um, yeah, also best of luck uh, with, um, you know, you and stay safe. And uh, best of luck with the books. Uh, enjoy them, most of all. Yes, I, I really will. And uh, until next time, until we have more slow burn, more LOA, and more scandalous yeah. proposals. Yeah, until next time. And also, I haven't forgotten about your proposal. That's definitely not scandalous, but, you know. Uh, yeah. Good chat about choices, you know. Yeah, I doubt this scandalous. No, I'm not that. Not that bad. <laughs> but uh, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for uh, coming here and see you again. Bye. Until next time. Yeah, yeah. Until next time. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>